Uganda. Hi guys, it's your girl in Kenya and my team here and we are on the road again. This time we are traveling from Mombasa all the way to the Pearl of Africa, Uganda. So guys, you know we've covered most of the East African countries. We've been to Tanzania, we've been to Rwanda and it's time we also explored Uganda because so many of you have have really requested us to go there and as much as you've requested it was always in our bucket list so we are excited about this we're going to explore uganda it will be a very interesting journey we have googled a few places we have we have seen some recommendations we have also researched on instagram and i think this is going to be a very interesting journey we always think of every time we think of uganda we just know there is kampala there is busia there is malaba but trust me guys there is more to uganda than that and i'm excited to show you so we left mombasa at around six it was quite dark so we did not record much but now we are 40 kilometers to voi so you can see we have just parked somewhere by the road and let's go as usual guys you know this is an entire series so stay tuned for every episode of this series and we will finally give you a full documentary but for now let's just explore let's enjoy this journey and hadia that is hadia good morning let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have much to say yeah. and then we have our driver here africa, so pearl of africa here we come this is going to be so interesting i can't wait to eat matoke <laughs> and rolex oh and rolex see, rolex is rolex and then let's see if we'll get some chicken the ones that you are usually are usually sold by the road i can't wait and the bread <laughs> oh and the bread, bread that tastes like cake yeah it's so nice ha 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 actually for for all of us it won't be our first time i think it would be for some two second times or for some the, the third time but this time at least we'll be taking you guys with us it's been so many years so i know a lot has changed so i'm excited to find out let's go from this far I've made a video about this beautiful town kindly check it out it's where most people usually take a break maybe a bathroom break or maybe a snack break So, I'll just show you bits and pieces of the road. 
not I hope you guys can bear with me but we'll see there's more interesting things to, to see ahead so stay tuned guys we went to the mall sari center to pick a few things from the mall and to have some bitings and now guys we're headed towards eldoret it's around 507 so we're expecting to get to eldoret at around maybe 10 or 11. we're already at uthiru the driver right here is very tired i think i'll take over when you get somewhere at, at a petrol station, I've rested enough. Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, you I've have rested slept. enough. I've slept. <laughs> I woke up. Today there were so many policemen on the policemen on the road, so we were very disciplined on the road. That is why it, it took us a very long time to get to Nairobi. But until you get to Eldoret, we've already booked an, an apartment, which will stay for the night and then leave very early in the morning for the border we'll be using malaba border so guys let's continue with this journey now i'm the driver wish me luck i don't know how to drive at night <laughs> And clearly we'll get there very late. it's getting late we'll see we'll talk very early in the morning so that we can show you where we stayed and the plan for the day 
but we'll be crossing the border tomorrow so the, all of those people who've been asking about the requirements about the border i think it's the same ones as, as the ones in tanzania but i'll give you i will inform you once we cross the border to i'll just confirm if the uganda side is just the same as the tanzania side and the rwanda side just like it, all other east african countries so guys let's see each other in the morning So this is day two of our road trip. It is a road trip from Mombasa to all the way to Uganda. We are going to explore Uganda, but we haven't reached uh, Uganda yet. We are in Eldoret. It has it had been a very long journey all the way from from Mombasa. We left yesterday at around six in the morning, and we got to Eldoret at at eleven. We had some stopovers somewhere along the road in Nairobi and all that. So guys, thank you for joining us in this trip. And right now, this is where we stayed. This is the Airbnb we stayed at. It's a two bedroom. It's just a... Hey guys, Char is here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This I is this is Sharon. She's not going. She's not going in this trip. She's so not, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. She has some things to take care of. So this is a two bedroom house. It's a simple house. Basically, it, you just get all the basic things you need. There's nothing fancy, but it was comfortable for the night. Hadia is here. Good morning. This time we'll have to ensure that Hadia drives while we're in Uganda. Hallelujah. Do you know she 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 knows how to drive, but it's it's been some time since the last time she drove. Now she's just scared of driving. <laughs> Anyways, now we are headed towards Malaba border. Where okay, so far what we know is that the usual stuff you are required to have a valid uh, yellow fever certificate. COVID-19 COVID vaccine certificate, uh, your passport. For this car, we must have the, the original logbook because it's our car. We have the original logbook. If you do not have an original logbook, you should have a copy, but with a, with a letter from the, owner of the, from the owner of the car to confirm that they have allowed you to use the car to cross the border and your passport as usual. So basically that is what you need for the for crossing the border. That is what we've been using when we went to Rwanda and when we went to Tanzania. Check out those videos. It is an entire it is series, a couple of series. So we are assuming it's still the same thing in, in Uganda, even though we know that in Uganda at times maybe your ID, if you're a Kenyan, your ID is just enough. But we'll let you know once we get to the border. So, so far guys, so far so good. Let's go, let's go. Bye guys, I want to see this video um, mm -hmm. sooner. Eh, but I'm missing a lot. I'm missing a lot. Maybe I'm not going to be able to Yes, South Africa. Gotcha. Where is it called South Africa? Yes, I'm going to be able to get it. Anyway, bye. Adios. Eldoret is a slow growing town. Okay, it is growing faster than we thought. I think revolution had a, a great impact on most of these towns that had been neglected for some time. So, Eldoret is one of those beneficiaries of devolution. This is Eldoret town. Where we stayed is somewhere along the Eldoret Kisumu highway. We'll go straight to Uganda road and then just use that Uganda road to take us to Uganda. It is that simple. Pearl of Africa, Uganda, or, or Uganda. Adia, how do you pronounce it? Uganda. Not Uganda. No. no. <laughs> Uganda. Uganda. If you've never been to Eldoret, this is Eldoret town. It's very soon becoming a city. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've actually made an extensive video on Eldoret, the entire town, and its outskirts. So go and check out the video so that you can understand more about the town. But otherwise, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing towards, okay, it used to grow along the highway, but nowadays I can see people are moving further and further from the Uganda road. So that is a good sign of growth. There are plenty of border borders. Border borders are these motorcycles. It is a means of transport, you can just you can take one to uh, take one that will take you anywhere within the town or under its outskirts. Now this is Uganda Road. 
Now this is the main highway in in Eldoret. It is just it is the one that we we used when we were coming from Nairobi. It is Uganda Road. So if you just follow this route, it will somehow take you to Uganda, and that's what we intend to do. We are past Mylene and there is this interchange, it's very new, so we are figuring out how we are going to take the, the Eldoret, Webuye, Malaba Highway. So I think we are going straight. You know there is a lot of road constructions in Kenya, so at times you might take one wrong turn and you find yourself in another town. So we are officially headed towards western Kenya. This is Tarbo. It is one of those towns along this road. Right ahead of us, you see that truck? It's carrying sugar cane. I think it's, they're just from harvesting. I've tried the sugar in Tanzania and the sugar in Rwanda. Kenyan sugar is the best. I agree. Yes, I, I, I do you agree. I agree. Our sugar is the sweetest, yes, hands down. So our sugar, our tea, and our coffee is the best. People from Tanzania and Uganda, don't fi don't finish me. I'm just saying, <laughs> this is my opinion. <laughs> so here is the sugar cane. Now, uh, some people when when people are younger, I think that these trucks with sugar cane, they carry sugar cane, but they usually open on the sides. So you'll find that some kids will pull a couple of sugar canes which they would come and eat later. Okay, that is stealing, but let's say it was just fun. <laughs> the thrill of it, the thrill of taking sugar cane and not being caught is the point there. Current town market. There are so many small towns along the road. I think they have grown because of this, this being the main highway to the border. It's a Kale word. Sakale, you know, it's Kipukaren. Uh -huh. But Luya would say Kipukaren. 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 It's mostly the inhabitants of this place are mixed. They're mostly a Luya. But there are a few. There are a few Kalenjins. Yeah, there are a few Kalenjins here. Yeah. Kipukaren. So welcome to Kipukaren. <laughs> are you pronouncing it as a, as a Kalenjin or as a, or as a Luya? Luya? As a Luya. Kipukaren. 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 Oh, we'll be next. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. And here is a factory, Sango. Adia is saying it's pan paper, webuya pan paper. I have to confirm that. It could be webuya pan paper? Yeah, it is webuya pan paper. Ah, look at that. It's so rusted. When was the last time it, it's called rye paper. It's rye paper. Rye? Yes, you see the name there? Rai paper. Yeah, I think this new government wanted to... Is it this new government or the previous one? Okay, the government wanted to 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 revive Webuye Pan paper some time back. I don't know how far that has gone, but we are hoping for the best. At least it will make the people around here to have some jobs and the business for the tree business, paper business to improve in Kenya. Actually, this is my opinion. Since Kenya, we do not allow polythene bags. If we could have a, a paper factory in Kenya, it would make a lot of sense. And it will cost cut on so much cost of importing the paper. Because we, we buy a lot of paper to use it for packing, packaging of goods and all that. Yet, we have plenty of trees. And we had a factory that you can just revive. 
I mean, it is a win-win for Kenyans. I think that is one thing that if the government decides to look at, it would be very beneficial to us. India, dear. So just imagine, everything, almost everything is being packaged using, using like uh, paper, the brown papers. Even if the factory just produces the brown papers only without like the, without the writing papers or the books, just the brown papers, that is a lot of money. It will be a multi-million, maybe even billion business in Kenya. The only problem with that is the pollution. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember when we were young, we used to pass by Webuye when the pan paper was still functional and there used to be some very, very foul smell of rotten eggs. Rotten smoke, ro rotten eggs. That one in, from, from chemistry that... Yes. Yes, I remember it is H2S. It, yes, it's H2S. H2S. Ah, no, 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 no. H2S is laughing gas. S O. Which one is laughing gas? Uh, nitrogen. Ni ni nitrogen. Uh, the, 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 one, the laughing gas is for nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen. It's for nitrogen, nitrogen. oxide. But sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, yes, is the rotten egg smell. Thank you, chemistry teacher. You know yourself. <laughs> I know you're watching this video. <laughs> uh, if you know you know yes but there used to be that smell and all the time I, I could just imagine people who lived around this place like how the smell affected the people who lived around this place so in case the government wants to revive that factory please consider how to dispose of the the wastes i'm sure if, if that company gets revived this town will be bigger than how it looks right now the roads have changed. This is Kandui. Kandui, the town. And there's a road here that will take you to Bungoma. But you can see the town is quite active. A lot of shuttles. These are the PSVs, the private, pri public service vehicles that can take you to Kitale, Misihu. Eldoret, Nakuru, you see, that is their stage over there. This road on our left, this one, it is the one that will take you to Bungoma. But today we are not going to Bungoma. However, we've done a tour of Bungoma and Hunter's Paradise Hotel that is somewhere in Bungoma. Go and check out the video. I tell you guys, that hotel is, it's one of the best around this place. It's indeed a paradise. So you can see a lot of these trucks, most of them probably are from Uganda, they are heading back. They have dropped some containers or they have picked some more luggage and they are going back to the other side of Kenya because this is just the main road that takes you to the border. Wololo! There's been an accident here. Woo! I hope... Where? I hope that everyone there is safe. Where? Arrive alive. Road safety always. Yes. <laughs> Road safety always. I, I just hope that everyone in that car and everyone who's involved is still okay. That is the first thing. Safety first and then all these other properties can be replaced with insurance or not, but Life and health matters. Now we are approaching the border. You can see there's a very long queue of these uh, heavy commercial vehicles that are going to be cleared at the border. Where? You can just imagine what time these people got here. <laughs> they must have come very early, very early, so that they can make the queue but i believe that there's a time when this whole queue will be cleared despite everything so it will be cleared and then the road will be a bit more available for people to maneuver around now you can see we are just we just have to overtake we cannot use the right 
we cannot keep left, we just have to overtake because we'll be stuck in this queue. The famous Malaba town. Wow. Some people call it Malaba, others Malava. Which is which? Malaba is a different place in Kakamega. Malava. Malava. But I think it's the same. You know it's written, it's written Malaba with B A, but you know according to how how most people in the Western pronounce B, they pronounce it as a V. So it sounds like Malava. But it's written as Malaba. And of course, I'm sure there's a lot of business going, going on between the two borders. Like, it is Malaba in, in the Kenyan side, it is also Malaba in the Ugandan side. So we are at Malaba one-stop border post, and we are not allowed to record in there. So uh, we'll let you know what happens in the border once we cross the border. We are leaving the one-stop border point. We are trying to get a SIM card. It's been like... I think one hour. The process has been one hour. We found the total petrol station here, and we are we are fueling the car. The, the per liter it's fifty nineteen Ugandan shillings, which translates to about one eighty one Kenyan shillings if we use the exchange rate of twenty twenty seven twenty eight shillings there. So I think in Tanzania, in Uganda the fuel is more expensive than in Kenya because in Kenya it's around 170, 178 they about it's a bit expensive in Uganda but not by a big margin so we'll be just fine so we have branched to our left from the main road actually to our right from the main road and we are approaching Tororo this is the the rock I don't know if it, this is a rock or it's a hill that we had seen while we were still in Malaba that there are some stairs some sort of stairs that people uh, use when they are climbing to the top of that hill so it should be fun hiking up there it is 1.4 kilometers tall I think it qualifies to be a hill in my opinion <laughs> it qualifies to be a hill but since it has been named as a rock Let's go with that. Welcome to Tororo Town. Busitema University. Now, now, now. I think I'll just, I'll just follow this. I'll just follow this track. It's in a very old town. Yeah, it is a, an old town. And I think the, the, the main thing that has made it grow this far is Tororo Cement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I've learned about Tororo cement when I was doing my geography. Tororo cement. So it is a relatively big town. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm tempted to think that it is bigger than Malaba. I think it's bigger than Malaba. It is. And a lot of motorbikes, just like in Malaba. Motorbikes and bicycles. And plenty of bananas by the roadside. You know, bananas like plantains are the staple food for Ugandans. I don't know if they have adapted uh, ugali, like maize, as also an additional staple food. But from what I learned back then, it's bananas. And, and, and I can see a lot of bananas around. I think during the when it gets dark, it's a, it's lit. You can see these street lights. Tororo Central Market. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So there are more shops on this side. We are heading towards this road. I think this road is still under construction. So the roads are not labeled, so I can't tell you which road this is. But it's Uhuru Road. It's basically that is what that is Tororo. We just passed by to 
you'll see a few things and how, how big the town is and what kind of things are being sold so that you can be able to tell the kind of business, the kind of people who live around this place. But we we, we have not we will not take we will not climb the rock because it's it's getting late and we have to get to Jinja in good time so that we can secure our accommodation. So we are going back to the main road so that we can head towards Jinja. I've set the the kilometers for this trip so that I can be able to tell you guys how many kilometers it is from one place to another. From from Jinja, let's go. Now from Jinja, I'll be able to tell you guys. When we were trying to research about Tororo before we came here, I, I, I learned that many people are referring it to as a mineral town. And my initial assumption was because there's Tororo cement, probably they were mining. They were mining limestone. But apparently, those hills that we saw coming here, those are Sukulu hills. And uh, flint, phosphorus, and iron were found back then. I don't know if they, they still mine it up to date. We are going to confirm that fact if they still have phosphorus and iron being mined in those hills. These are the hills. I believe this this is Suluhu, Suhulu, Suhulu hills. These ones. I don't know, it's Sulu Suluku. Suluku is the president of Tanzania. Suluku. <laughs> that is Suluku. This is Sukulu. Sukulu. So we are back to the main highway. And I think at this time of the year we have longer longer days than the night. And on my right, I believe this is Tororo Cement Factory. On my right. Yeah, this is Tororo Cement Factory. Kenyans, did you know that we import electricity from Uganda? Yes, we know. Yes, we import electricity from Uganda because of the of the dam, the dam in Jinja. Mm. Yes, that there is where there is the source of River Nile. So there is a big dam there, and I, that I can't wait to go and see. They just need to confirm they're just confirming your details nothing much if you passed by the border if you have your passport stamped if you have the it's called c32 c32 is like temporary importation for your car if you have it you're good and the insurance yeah and the insurance of the car ensure you have the insurance apparently there are some fake insurances at the at the board at the border so always confirm if they are valid now as we drive we are also enjoying the sunset look at that sunset guys this is Iganga we are supposed to get some 
some chicken on the road here but it's very late i'm not sure if we can get the chicken three hey shika mm, wait first let me see the small ones these ones are how much the same five five yeah guys we are approaching the ginger bridge the famous ginger bridge i can't wait to show you guys this bridge during the day but it looks magnificent it fits into lake victoria yes it fits into lake victoria but wow look at this wow wow this is a majestic bridge wow wow i love this bridge i can't wait to show you guys this this bridge during the day so guys we've arrived safely in ginger we are so grateful to god we booked a cabin somewhere in some it's like two kilometers from ginger town and trust me guys i love cabins and this is one of them it's simple but it's very quiet just listen to that so i hope to give you guys a, a proper tour of this place it is somewhere we would wish to, we would wish to stay for two days unfortunately tomorrow is not available but tunakatia mwenye nyumba we are trying to see if we can get an extra day here or in another cabin close to this one so that we can enjoy having the view guys if the views i have seen on the website are what is actually here i'm telling you they are very nice views so guys i think we'll prepare some supper oh and we managed to go the chicken the famous chicken guys i have to show you this one the famous chicken that are usually sold by the road we've already eaten the roasted but the roasted plantains they are sweet bananas very nice we've already finished eating those ones on the road each of them was five thousand ugandan shillings you can convert that using 27 shillings but the last time i tried them they were really nice i hope they're still nice so guys all of those people who've been saying that there is the famous chicken look at this how do they even get it into these skewers these people have some real real skill let the day end for today we'll talk very early in the morning so guys see you in the morning good morning from ginger so guys this is our day three of the road trip on our first day we came from mombasa to Eldoret, we slept at Eldoret, day two from Eldoret all the way to Jinja. Now we got here very late, but just have a look at the cabin we were staying at. If you look at the environment, you'll just hear Mother Nature doing her thing, birds chirping all over. It's a very, very quiet place. It's next to either River Nile, from what we saw on the fort, on the fort, it's either close to River Nile or lake victoria it's one of those water bodies we'll show you i hope we'll be given access to go down there paid around 64 dollars in total including the service charges and the commission for the website it is on airbnb i'll put that link below here i'm with adia and i'm with patrick you can see we've already che we are already checking out those are our staff so guys let me give you a short tour of this place before we go and explore ginger <music> Karibu. So as you can see, it has an open plan kitchen. This is just the, the ultimate couch. This living area is quite simple. You can just see this is the living area. This is the dining space. These are so real. Here is the kitchen area. There are a lot of utensils. We cooked yesterday night. Coffee maker. Okay, I've never used this. I'm used to the electric one, but I was just amazed at how this one works. I like it. I like it. I think I'll get myself one. If you run out of fresh water, they will add you the water. So this is a good thing. By the way, if you are host, if you are an Airbnb owner, consider putting some fresh water for people. You never know if someone will get here very late and they need some water or some tea. Okay, this is the first bedroom. You can see two people can, can sleep here. It is, this one is five by six, meaning that it's a queen size. And there is one more space up here. Okay, this cabin can accommodate up to five people. That is what you can see here. Two people, one person there. It's a two bedroom. Each bedroom is an end suite. So here is the bathroom area. Here it is rustic and all that. So there is hot water. Uh, the bathroom is also a bit small. I would say this bathing area is a bit small. 
but the entire bathroom space the washroom area is quite big this place is very clean by the way you can just walk barefoot this is somewhere close to a water body it's safe to put the the insect screens yeah these are the insect screens additionally there is a mosquito net here just in case there are some mosquitoes that got in so the other bedroom is just very similar to this one apart from the fact that it has one queen size bed only I think this is the master. You see, it is just this bed only. It's a king size bed. It is also in suite. Everything else in the bathroom is similar in both rooms. I think as we go by, you notice that there is a lot of similarity between Rwanda and Uganda. I think it's because they neighbor, they are neighbors. So for instance, there is this art. You see this woven woven art? We found it in Rwanda, but it is also found in Uganda. They make this, they make more or less similar things. And one thing I've noticed about the all the cabins that we've been to, including the one they shared in Nakuru, and many other cabins that we've been to, is that they do not have television. So if you're booking any cabin, kindly confirm from the host if there is any television because most of them do not have that. There is working Wi-Fi, so if you need to watch anything, you can just use your laptop or your phone but there is no television okay that is a good idea but at the same time cabin owners i know it's supposed to be far away from technology and all that but just put a tv there so that if someone will want to use it they can be able to use it like for some of us entertainment is important <laughs> we're in that generation <laughs> the workers are very friendly and the horse is also very nice and you just realize that from the time you wake up, they are cleaners doing some cleaning around here. This room is booked for today. We wanted to add another day, but this room is booked for today. So we are being taken to a different, a different cabin. It is similar to this one, but it can only accommodate four people. So let's go and see if it is any different. But I believe it's more or less the same. So if you would like to book this, this uh, cabin, I'll put the link below here. And it cost us... On the website it was $54 plus additional $10 for cleaning. So it's a total of $64 if you'd like to book it. For, that is the price for now. But the prices might change. You'll just check on the link that we'll put below here on the description box for this cabin. It's called the Hornbill Cabin. So let's go to our next cabin before we go and explore Ginger. So this is cabin number two. Adia, what's the name of this cabin? Turaco. Turaco. Yes, Turaco. Yeah, Turaco, Turaco Cabin. So the other one was Hornbill, this is Turaco. Turaco is very similar to Hornbill. You can see it is very, very similar, more or less the same. But one thing I forgot to mention, guys, is that they recycle most of their glass. This is supposed to be a wine glass, but it has been recycled. You see, it's just a normal wine glass. I've seen this in many cabins. The difference between that, the Hornbill and this one, is the bed. You see, this bed, it is a, it is a queen size bed, but it is no bed. The extra bed up there guys i'm telling you my labor was hot it's like there are three suns had descended on us but thank god this place is a bit cool because of the trees for decoration that's a drama traditional music yeah and you can see this bed looks very similar to the other one this book it is an instruction book it gives you the instruction on how to check in what to, where to find one or two things how to, it gives you contacts for taxi, it gives you contacts for tour guides around the town. They have provided you with everything so that you don't have to go back and forth getting lost in town or getting lost where. Yeah, they also provide kayak, those two tiny boats. It is free of charge, isn't it? Yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's free of charge. You can go and kayak down there in, in the river. It is free of charge. But if you'd like to go like a cruise or something, there is a guide. There's a guide fee that you've provided for here. Guys, how often do you get free kayak? Most of the time it's charged. I'm just glad this is free. At $54. $44 for the apartment, for the cabin, sorry, and $10 for cleaning. And they, they do they really do thorough cleaning. That one I can I can vouch for them. So this one is by far cheaper. By around seven dollars or something or there about it's cheaper but you get the same thing same environment so i'll totally go for this so this one is, it, it accommodates four people the other one accommodates five people
we've met our host and we told her of the activities we wanted to do around ginger she's helped us make a road plan and today we are doing water activities but first before you go to any water activity you need to eat so here is some soda we told you that they recycle their glasses from moi and this is rolex the famous ugandan, the famous ugandan rolex. rolex it's a chapati and egg two chapatis two eggs I don't intend to faint in River Nile. Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. Bungee jump. It is in my bucket list. Lord, give me the strength to do this. <laughs> but I will do it. Hi. Milo, hi. Oh, look at that. Look at River Nile. Oh, it's so wide. Is it the biggest river in, in, in Africa? Yes. Yes, it's so wide. We are going to do some tubing, so it's just like staying on uh, some tubes hanging around the water in River Nile. This is our host. Hi, my name is Dustin, and I'm so happy I'm hosting Olivia and Adija here. Yes. So we're going tubing. Yes, and yeah. she's 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 our. You you can tell her. Eh? <laughs> she's fun. So she'll explain to us what tubing is. What is tubing? I don't really know. What I know is mm -hmm. it's a um several tubes tied together like tire tubes mm -hmm. with a lot of pressure in them tied together mm -hmm. so each one each person sits on one tube and you float it's like a it's, it's like a raft uh -huh. a tube raft oh that it's floats. like a tube raft yeah that floats on whoa, the river whoa, whoa. just look at that this river is humongous it's so big <laughs> could swim all the way across but he used to attack even the guests. Like in case he doesn't know you, so we had to get rid of him. He was a good guard dog. <laughs> so even when this guy was coming, he was like, uh, ah. You can see how excited I'm. I I love water activities. If I call it to come and find it here, I should be there. No, here is our ring. I have to get rid of it. So, two being here, I have to go to the pool. Is there any guy here? So, you can have you. So, you can have you. What are we going to put here? You can have you. You can have you. Oh, so you can put them there. Okay. Okay. I was asking if you can go with our shoes, blah, blah, blah. He's like, here's the bag you can place them in. Oh, in, uh -huh. that, in that tube? Yeah. We'll miss ya! If, if the other black dog, the one to fear, was around, it would have jumped in and swam after us. <laughs> really? Oh. If it used to swim, it would chase people. Like, there are some guys used to come and Ank around there. Uh, it just it will smell them all the way from the gate. Uh -huh. It will come down and chase. By the time the guys swam, uh -huh. the dog swam after them. Then the guys <laughs> went under. Eh? They swam from under. The dog reached around that stump of tree that bird is. Uh -huh. It stopped. It waited. When they resurfaced, like goodness, they it went for them. River <laughs> nine. And is he moving? He is moving. I don't know. saying here well but if you meet people on the river always wave and say hi you ah, never know i can't fish. believe i'm riding in river noise <laughs> mama i made it <laughs> <laughs> they are mobiles Hey, 
the guy is like, you stop and these people see on so. How can we get that? You can get it. There we go. Bujagari cave. Yes. This is where the other nice. old man used to come. Yeah, yeah. What happens here? Or is it just a cave? Oh my god, that is so pretty. This is cute. Cute? Yes, this is I feel cute. like I'm going to go in a horror movie now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like beautiful. it. It's beautiful. Oh my god. Wow. Caves are real. I've never seen a cave. Sure. No. You've so never seen a cave? Yes, in the movies. Come, come come to Mombasa. We have a restaurant in, in a cave. cave. Oh god. Yes. Yes. Oh come my to, god. Come to Mombasa. Come to Mombasa. You, yeah. A very beautiful one. Like the one in where Greece. Is it Greece? Put your oh bum bum in the water. Yeah, the water. Ooh, the water feels so cool. Hey, I'm uh, scared. I'm holding it for you, don't worry. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Yay. Wait, your bum bum, don't disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was so, this is so cool. I know. <laughs> Oh. There is a way we just pronounce our words. Like I can tell, even when I'm watching BBC or Jazeera and I'm sleeping, and that's how you're gonna. Me, I'm holding you. I'm like holding you. <laughs> okay, where are we going? Why, where are we going? They always bring beer. You see why I refuse the drink? What's it? Why have you tied your boat to us? Ours. Um, you're looking for mine. Looking to say so. <laughs> We're out here tubing on the Nile. Yes. The longest river in the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're about to scream our lungs out. Oh, chills. Now, Whitney is, is there. Whitney is up. He's the one rafting there. And we're just lounging. Yeah. He's basically sunbathing. carrying us. <laughs> sunbathing. Basically, tubing is sunbathing in tubes in the river. <laughs> But so much fun in it. Ooh, I can get used to this. <laughs> we got it. Oh, you, 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 you. What? Oh, yeah. The, even the dead is on. The gecko. It is a lizard. Monster lizard. This humongous thing. Yes. Oh, it says it's like a baby crocodile. It's huge. Is the name of the dam? Oh, it falls down. Oh, the old oh, falls down. It's the famous. Our local name is Naluba Lidam. Naluba Lidam. But it is the Owen. Owen falls down. Owen falls down. That's where I Oh, it is where you get the water, the, the power which you exposed to us. Oh, I love it around the way. Water now here. Did and Moza? They go like this. Okay, this is activity number one. We are hoping to get more activities so that we can see how we can compare those two cities. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I can't believe I'm, I'm somewhere at the center of the river and I'm just this calm. At your safe. Gotcha. This is insane. <laughs> Most of the time when I go at the center of a, of a lake oh or an ocean, I'm usually in a boat. But today I'm in a That's what my swimming instructor told me. To swim. I always swim in the river, but water is water. You have to Even when someone is drowning, let them drown. Yeah. There when, you know, 
they have lost that energy to fight. If you go there, when you start to save them, we are still fighting. They will also drown. You should come to Jinja because it's the source of the river Nile. And on the river Nile, you can do tubing, rafting, kayaking, and some sun bathing. So um, we have cabins along the Nile. They are called Nile Garden Cabins. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or our website at www.nilegardencabins.com. We look forward to hosting you. And they have some other property coming up. Yeah. It's up there. We've seen a sneak peek, and I think it's it's now today was the water activity day. Yeah. We'll be rough. We'll be. This is tubing, and then. Rafting, bungee jumping, rafting kayaking on the Nile. Kayaking on the Nile. It's, what is the difference between kayaking and tubing? Is it more or less the this same? Kayaking, kayaking. Kayaking. But with kayaking. a lot, with a lot of activity there. Energy, effort. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so kayaking is, is fun and uh, exercise. As well. Yeah. But tubing, tubing is, is just the lazy version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, la yeah. the lazy <laughs> version <Man>. of kayaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I can't. I could get used to this. <laughs> Actually, when you book this package, book. there's photography in, uh, included, uh, drinks, drinks fruits, and, wh and fruits. fruits. What else? We now, think? because we wanted to cut on course, we said that we are not taking drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are regretting. <laughs> we are regretting. And we have a watermelon. Yeah. That there is watermelon. You it. Yeah. Okay. And I saw pineapple somewhere. Do you, is it our knife? Well? Yeah, we have one very thing. <laughs> 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 So if you want to do bungee jumping, there is where you will do the bungee jumping. Yeah. So you have two bungee jumping in Uganda. Two yeah. 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 We have uh, that one, bungee Uganda, Uganda and, and the, yeah, world water. The wild waters. The Mala yeah. wild waters. Where is wild waters? Down, down on the river. So you you pass on Kayunga Lodge, mm -hmm. then you go to Kalagala side. Okay. So there is also another bunch. They are adrift. Water. Well, I think oh, second in the Instagramable hotel, the Mala Wild Waters. That, that is where you do the bungee ban jumping. Mm. It's, it's there on the same property. Mm, yeah. yeah, the yeah. highest one. Oh, the highest bungee jumping it's in East Africa. Africa. We're waiting for someone to jump, to bungee jump from up there. But the person is taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> they are taking too long. They are screaming. Like they are giving themselves a lot of sight. There. <laughs> I would definitely do that. <laughs> you are alive! Don't die. You see the, the now she's done. Yeah, yeah. it's just that. And 200,000 Uganda shillings is gone. Yes. For those five seconds. Right? Uh, now that I'm talking about seconds. it, what? For those five For seconds. Those five seconds. 200,000 Uganda shillings are gone. Buy a nice car. For higher. just five seconds of oh adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, that came from nowhere. Now I'm scared. <laughs> now the two people who do not swim are left in the tube. <laughs> you guys are good. How is the water? Okay. Oh eh? I made it. I survived the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> but that was so epic. <laughs> and it's so sweet. We are eating pines so with sweet. their apples. Woo! See you later. See you later. Yeah. So guys, 
about tubing. That was epic. That is how I can describe it. It's so much fun. At first, the thought of it would make you think that it's so risky, but it's very safe. Very, very safe. And you get to see the caves. We saw someone bungee jumping. I'm even inspired to do it now. <laughs> it's around 200,000 Ugandan shillings. So right now we are going to the source of, of River Nile because today you said we are doing like water sports. We were hoping to catch a sunset cruise. He's saying like he can, the best price he can give us is to 50,000 Ugandan shillings. That is almost 9,000 Kenyan shillings, which is far above our budget. So let's see what you can do, but we must definitely catch the sunset and we must check the source of River Nile. So guys, let's go. We managed to get uh, the sunset cruise at 150. Thousand Ugandan shillings. That is 5,500 Kenyan shillings, and we are headed in that direction. Okay, that package is inclusive of tour as well as um, a sunset. Like you have to stay in the river as you wait for the sunset. So and also visiting the exact source of the River Nile, right in the middle. Yes. The yes. part where Lake Victoria ends and where River Nile starts from. The main road, then you left. This other one goes to the old bridge, and the old bridge is for borders. Oh, the, the old bridge is for border borders? Yes, they don't allow vehicles. Oh, why? Because they chased the borders from the other side. Okay. Like, don't use the new bridge, use this one. Okay. And the other one, apparently, they're saying it's, it's weight limit, it's old. Okay. Guys, this is Ginger Bridge. Just look at how majestic it is. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh my God, this is so nice. Wow, so, I think they're preparing for today. Today is a public holiday. Today is a public holiday. Yeah, it's Jan and Luomo Day. The, the the reverend who Idi Amin killed. Oh. Yes. And the freedom fight and the president killed him. Oh my. So usually they don't light. They light on special days. The train bridge. Oh, so yeah. the, you have the train bridge, you have the old bridge, and you have the new ginger bridge. Yes. Okay. So the one with the ropes is the new one. This one, the very first one, is for the train. Okay. The white one is little egret. Yes. Uh huh. You have the African open build stock. Okay. Dolphins and crabs and snails. Well, the pike. The, there are crabs in this water. Oh, yes. Yes, they are freshwater crabs. Oh, freshwater crabs. Kingfisher, that's a what? That's a pie, the kingfisher. Pie. Yeah. So the Nile has a lot to offer. Too many activities you cannot get it done in two days. You actually need a week in the Nile to enjoy all these activities. We, we are trying to get the best we can, and so far it's amazing. Come to the Nile. Good Cheers. vibes. <laughs> there is the Busoga Kingdom, Buganda Kingdom, uh, Toro Kingdom. So um, right now. We have been in Busoga Kingdom and what separates Busoga Kingdom from Buganda Kingdom mm -hmm. is the River Nile. So right here is another kingdom called Uganda. The other side is Busoga Kingdom. Okay. I'm in Busoga, so I come from Busoga Kingdom. Oh. It would be a small eagle but it's huge. What separates us is the river. the river. Yes. Once you cross so, the bridge, mm -hmm. so it's like you slept in Buganda Kingdom. Oh, so we slept in Buga, Buganda Kingdom, and this yeah. side is Buso, Busoga, Kingdom. Busoga Kingdom. Yeah. So you are from Busoga. Yeah, I'm from Busoga. Actually, that, that 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 eagle is bigger than a cat. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it is bigger than a cat. That's so big. Yeah, it's so big. Apparently, that's John Speak Memorial where John Speak stood, and there was like. This is River Nile. This is Lake Victoria. Oh, the monument is up there. Okay. A lot of things in, in, in history, the one we said about, uh -huh. we discovered so, so, as if it was never there. Wow. See, see how the water is. As who are Wow, well, the water is rapid yeah. here. So that this is the source of the River Nile now. Where? Yeah. Like when they say source of the River Nile and you come through, that's where you come through and then 
the boat. The other side where you're seeing the little hut. Uh huh. Yeah. So you mean the other side is the lake? Yes, other side is the lake. Oh my god, that's very interesting. so hard that the water levels went so high that all this place got submerged. So people would walk here freely, that's why you're able to see the trees, electric poles, all this place was an island. Yeah. 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 You will see like water water has no direction yet. It's like it's coming out. Huh? Okay. Watch your, watch your and now I have stepped at the source of you and I here you go. Yay! We are finally at the source of River Nile. From here you can see around this place there are plenty of like springs of water coming from the ground. Uh, it's not like really flowing but you can see it's flowing from the left towards the Nile. Actually here is where there is demarcation between the Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria. and River Nile. Yeah. But from here somewhere just around this hut uh, you'll see that there is some springs of water coming from the ground and initially this was an island. Can you imagine? An island. All got submerged. Yeah. <laughs> Where exactly the source is? This is the source. Yes. Behind McNair Station. Yeah. Where did you stand here? We did already. It's for his dating profile. Okay. Uh, 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 That's show nice. The girls. Nice, uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> there is the source over there. You can see the water over there. There, 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 there. <laughs> There's another landing site, the other side in Masese. It's called Masese landing site. So this is, I think, Ripon landing site. Mm -hmm. So they always come here, they offload and load goods. It's also used by some locals who stay, of course, on, on those islands. The old pier, there's another pier at the landing site in Masese. But this is the old pier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this here is a fishing village around there. People remain connect activity, basically fishing around here. If they have seen this from Lake Victoria, or where is it from? I think it comes from Lake Victoria, but it also grows it on its moves. own. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. But surprisingly, the locals have found a way of using it as a raw material to make baskets, mats. Um, yes. Oh, so nice. they also incorporate them into charcoal briquettes. They dry it and make charcoal briquettes that um, somehow help in cooking and uh -huh. not use lots of trees. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's quite been helpful the locals have found a way of max maximizing it not that's making really it seem nice. like that's it's really a terrible nice. way Thank you.
So guys, we're back to our cabin. This is my dinner. I had to get this chicken. These are street foods, by the way. Day was epic. Day is turning out to be one of my favorite towns. We paid 200,000 Ugandan shillings for the tubing. It is an activity that you just, if you've never done it, please ensure you try it. It's so much fun. It's very much relaxing. There is sunbathing. All you, all you need is your sunscreen. And just bring yourself and have fun if they offer you uh, the, if the package is offered uh, with some drinks and some fruits please take it because trust me you will think you're so full until you go up the river Nile and you just feel like you need to relax and have a drink or a cocktail please take the drink and the fruits if you can it's supposed to be a like a half day uh, a half day activity but we wanted just for one hour, but it turned out to be two hours. In fact, we even wanted more time because we have so many activities to do, but that was so much fun. I would do it another time if I return back to Jinja. There was karaoke, guys. It was embarrassing, but it was so much fun. We had so much fun. <laughs> that embarrassing part was serious, guys. Yes, if you sing, you get a shot of whiskey, but I don't drink. I give it out to someone else. You know who? Eh? I gave it out to someone else, but that was so much fun. I would do it again. Daphne, you're the best. Shout out to her. She's our host. And she gave us the best experience ever. Imagine she organized all those activities. She gave us a roadmap of, of what to do tomorrow, how to go by everything. She gave us the contacts. In fact, if we need any guidance, we, we just have her number. So guys, she's a very nice guide in quotes because that's not her work but she offered to hang out with us we almost convinced her to take her to go with us to the entire road trip around uganda but she has commitments we are hoping to do bungee jumping i'm still contemplating on whether to do it or not you know it is an adrenaline thing and some it could be a matter of life and death even though there has never been any accident but pray for me we actually have so many things to do tomorrow. At the same time, we are supposed to go back to go all the way to Kampala. I don't know if we'll manage, but you guys stay tuned. Until tomorrow, see ya. Good morning, guys. It's yet another day in Jinja. This will be our last day or not, but we are hoping it will be our last day in Jinja and we have so many activities to do we've been in ginger for yeah this is the third day we did some water activities yesterday the, the previous day we just got uh, to ginger very late it is one of those towns that has many 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 things variety of, of options historical sites like exploration of the town there is the crafts market there are waterfalls and bungee jumping so guys, you see this? This is my swimming costume. You know, bungee jumping, is, it can be a matter of life and death. I'm not scared. I think once I get there is when I'll get scared. Yesterday when we were doing tubing, we saw someone, someone bungee jumping. <laughs> this looked very interesting but scary. We're not going to the highest bungee jumping place. We're just going here. So we're going to bungee Uganda. It's not so high, but we'll start with that one. So that next time when we return, we'll go to the highest one. Baby steps. Huh? So we're going to meet a guide. He's called Vin. He's the one who's going to take us to several places around the city. We say that we'll be using a guide when we go to a new town so that we can make the best out of it. So far it has been successful. When we were in Mwanza, when, when we were in, where in Rwanda, we got some very nice locals who could show us around. Thanks to Daphne again, our super host. By the way guys, we started this journey from Mombasa. First day we slept in Eldoret and then we came all the way. We passed by Tororo, we did a tour and then today we are in Jinja. So this journey is exploring the entire country if possible. Our guide is here. Vin, say hi. Hello, hi guys. That it's is Vin. over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay, he's been to Kenya several. He understands the Kenyan <laughs> way. <laughs> so he's going to take us around the town. Now we're exploring Jinja. Well, it's a crescent. It's called the Chira Road. What? Chira Road. Chira. Chira, yeah, like K double I R A. Okay. Now that is the local name of the River Nile. Okay. Now in Kampala there is Chira. Chira. Kampala is Luganda. Uh -huh. Here they speak Lusoga. Oh, here it is the Lusoga. Two different languages. Okay. Yes. So the language that is spoken here is Lusoga. Kampala is a slight uh, difference. Where well, we started from, okay. you, you saw there was like Nile Bridge cottages. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, yellow chili Nile mm -hmm. village. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Pal on the Nile Hotel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, just ahead of you, you're going to see another hotel. It's like hotel after hotel, hotel so after hotel. So most of the hotels are along the River Nile and they're on this side? Yes. Okay. Before 1928, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya and Uganda could only meet up to Jinja. The only way they could cross over to Kampala mm -hmm. was by boat because they would use the lake and mm -hmm. cross over. So the bridge was constructed in 1929 and just beneath it, a small road was constructed, a bridge mm -hmm. for the vehicles. But of course, the vehicles at the time were not so many. Mm -hmm. the, they built this road, it's called bridge, Bridgeway, but the original road is Kampala Road. Mm -hmm. So now it is old Kampala Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jebaleko is well done. Jebaleko. Jebaleko. Yeah. It's like, uh -huh. hey, well done. Uh -huh. And then it's more like a, a greeting. Way. So the other party is like Kare, uh -huh. like Koke, yeah. Nawe, So thank you, well done too. Oh, now that's Ka Kare, Nawe, Jevale. Nawe. But now that's the longer. Nawe is you. Yeah. Oh, also you. Uh, now the direct translation would be like also you. Uh, <laughs> but like it's uh, well done, thank you too. So like Kare, that's like okay. Oh. You get. But now, to be more polite, you have to also respond by saying, well done too. Uh -huh. yeah. you Thank know. you so much. It's well done, nyo. So nyo is like an emphasis of, you know. Well done, nyo. So the fallout of the East African Corporation, uh -huh. uh, Uganda hired the Rift Valley Railways okay. to manage their railways. I think it was co-managed between Kenya and Uganda. Uh -huh. Then later, they brought, uh, took down the contract and then it's now back to Uganda Railways. So it is Uganda Railways? Yes. So the other bridges are there, as you can see there. Okay. There's that one bridge, then beneath it is a bridge, if you see where the border borders are passing yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. And that was the bridge before that one, where the oil falls down. So it was, this was the first one, and then the, 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 the other one? The, 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 old, the old bridge, and yeah. then now the new yes. ginger bridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now let's walk along Uganda Railway. Uh, you guys said you went to the source of the Nile, right? Yeah, yeah, it is somewhere down there, the source of the Nile. Yeah, right, right, right in the middle of the water. Actually, that's up. That is, oh yeah, yeah because the that's water is <laughs> the water is flowing down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So just where you see like a, a tree, yeah. there's like a tree in the middle of the water. Uh -huh. Now that right there is a waterfall. There's a waterfall just beneath there. Ah, really? I don't know if the guy told you that. No. no. But so, uh, in 1954, uh -huh. when the construction of the dam uh, commenced, the Owen. So the Owen Falls Dam, which is just beneath this other bridge, the other bridge down there, uh -huh. this this river was the, the water levels were very very low. Uh -huh. So when that was created, there was a big uh, backflow. Uh -huh. So the water had was like controlled, uh -huh. so it couldn't go through all the other side. So most of it covered up what used to be the waterfall. Okay. Yeah. So that is the Ripon waterfall, if you've heard about Ripon anywhere. Ripon waterfall? Yeah, that's the Ripon Falls. But, now, it, but it's, it's, it's not so... It's not... It's, it's, it's not flowing anymore. No, no, no it's, it's, it's not there right now because it was submerged okay. by the, the river. Okay. But so that means that all these dams that you guys are, are creating, mm. are constructing along the Nile... They're destroying uh, uh, the ecosystem the, of, yeah. the, of the, the river. Mm -hmm. Uh, the market stood 
two regions mm -hmm. or two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So we have Buganda Kingdom. Yeah, we were told that this is Buganda. This is Busoga. This is Busoga and then this is yeah, Buganda. Buganda. Uh -huh. So in just no minute, you're going to be crossing over to Buganda Kingdom. To Buganda. <laughs> Buganda Kingdom, mm -hmm. among all other Ugandan kingdoms, mm -hmm. currently is the strongest existent kingdom. Okay. But we had kingdoms like Bunyoro Kingdom, Bunyoro mm -hmm. Kitara. Mm -hmm. We had kingdoms like Ankole. Mm -hmm. uh, we had kingdoms like Toro Kingdom, which split off from Bunyoro. Mm -hmm. And now Busoga wasn't a kingdom per se, mm -hmm. but in Busoga there were chiefdoms. Okay. So Busoga had 11 chiefdoms. Okay. And of which uh, all of these chiefs were, were like brothers. Okay. So they responded to each other. And until until the early 20s, when mm -hmm. the British were trying to bring the country together and colonize it, mm -hmm. then they forced the existence, existence of the people. The king, the Busoga turning into a kingdom. Okay. Yeah. The train line is very functional and operational, except that now for us here in Uganda, the passenger train doesn't work. Okay. So it's majorly covered. Oh, okay. Don't get scared. This is a very strong bridge. It has been here since 1928. Now, you see this whole mass of water over mm -hmm. this side? Mm -hmm. Down just there. Mm -hmm. So it, this river was crossing through up to where you see the pillars of the bridge. Okay. So all that, the land was reclaimed. They reclaimed land, okay. put them there, only because they had to construct this Okay, bridge. okay. The, the, the forces you're seeing, mm -hmm. Is because there is so much water which is like from underground, eh? mm -hmm. it's coming with a lot of force. Mm -hmm. it's a and if you, be, if you go to Markshan Falls, mm -hmm. Markshan Falls uh, is also like this, but the, the river Nile goes through a radius of about seven meters. The rock is about seven meters. Yeah. So the, that's why Markshan Falls is known to be the strongest waterfall in the world. Yeah, yeah. because I can imagine this whole mass of water in seven meters. <laughs> that would be. That, yeah, that, that means there are so many, so many caves down there. So the water pours so fast and so deep. So I, I, there must also, be caves. It's also believed it might be one of the deepest places on the River Nile because of the strength of the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is why you see that, all that water coiling. Yeah. It's because there is so much. You know, it's like a stream, as you can see. Eh? The stream going through and then the water starts to settle in on the outside, mm -hmm. you know, on the other side. Is there a time where the water level is higher than this? Uh, the water level is actually higher this time than ever. Okay. Uh, so this is as high as it has gotten before? Yeah. The last time we had water increase uh, was in uh, 1962. Okay. When the water level increased and it affected uh, the lakes. It submerged some of the river, the ports mm -hmm. on, on the... On the now we had the ports on, on the river, on mm -hmm. the lakes, uh, several lakes mm -hmm. across uh, the country. Around 2019, 2020, at that time when we were in lockdown, we had never had any increase of water before than, than this time. Mm -hmm. So it surpassed the level that it had ever been before. You know, there's a, a controversy of the Amazon and Nile, which one is the largest, longest river. Amazon is larger in, in, in Widith, but River Nile is longer okay. than the Amazon, yeah. We hope to get there one day. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What happens when this flo this floating island gets to the waterfall? Will it spoil the dam? No, it's not. This is really small in size. Okay. Uh, we've had one which came floating at uh, some point about two years ago, uh -huh. which was about two and a half acres. Two and a half acres just floating like this? Yeah. It came floating. How thick? How thick? It was huge, very big, very thick. Uh, the gardens, people's gardens uh, on them. You were asking me earlier about the the, the, the increase in water. Mm -hmm. So it's because of the water increase that affected, that brought about the, this, the breaking of the islands. So okay. they would tear off from the mainland uh, that had become weak and then they float over. So they would float all the way up to the, the to, dam. To the, to the Owen dams? Yeah, so when it floats there, mm -hmm. it blocks the water flow into the turbines. So the whole country was at blackout. So this one is just. So this, this one is won't. Really, this this, this won't is, interrupt anything. This is really small. This one is probably most of it is uh, hyphen and uh, 
and super piracy. So this one, it's not going to be a lot, a big, a big What thing. if someone was up there? Will it carry you the can, person with, because it, no, you won't sink? You could sink. You would because sink? This one does, it's not, it doesn't look like it's very, very strong. Oh my God, look at this. It's actually moving. Look at that. Can you try? Tebere zamu okuzukuka oh it's it's joined in that one okuzukukanga music yena asayewo asanyewo What would you understand out of that? I've just seen music. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who did this. Uh -huh. But uh, it makes a lot of sense, uh -huh. whoever did it. Uh -huh. So the thing is, Tebelezamu. Tebelezamu is imagine. Tebelezamu. Yeah, imagine. Mm -hmm. Okuzukuka, when you wake up, mm -hmm. uh, Nga is when, mm -hmm. music here now, when all the music is gone. Asanyo is vanished. Like, or imagine, just imagine how it would be. We wake up one day and we do and, not have and music. There's no sound of music, like all the music. Oh my god, that would like. be horrible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, most of us will be depressed. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I don't know who did this, but every time I pass here, I'm like, whoever did that, He's a smart something person. must have happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, either yeah. they are too musical or music just. That was awesome. <laughs> wow, it was awesome seeing a floating, a floating island. There's, a, I think, about two or three of these graves in Kenya. Okay. Um, there are a couple, yeah. There are, yeah, couple. There are a couple of mm -hmm. them. But in Uganda, this is the biggest. Okay. So why, why, why this? This mm -hmm. is now this property. This land belongs to the, to the, to the British government. Mm -hmm. They were the guys who were in charge of people who went to fight in the war. Okay. Uh, most of these guys fought in Israel on mm -hmm. behalf of the. Uh, they were fighting against the Germans. But Actual people were buried here. When they, you you when know, they in were, Kenya, they, they are like they are just tombstones representing those people, but there are no bodies there. Because uh, there some of the graves, some people could not be recovered. Okay. Some of them, but these ones were airlifted all the way from Israel. Yeah. Whenever they, they they died, they lifted them. So these are Ugandans, or most of them are Ugandans. Apart from the the, the British people here, mm -hmm. most of the ones we have here are all, are all Ugandans. As you can see, hmm? yeah, this is a East African uh, lake and mechanic engineers. So they were engineers mm -hmm. who are going to maybe do mechanics with those with those tankers. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was a King's African Rifles. This one was a soldier, mm -hmm. private. He was a private. Kiza is a Muganda from uh, Central Odongo, Odich Odongo, Odongo, Opobo, Okot, Okunya. Hey, well, people, huh? Now the names that are on this wall mm -hmm. are names of those people who who, did, who were not able to be buried in this place, okay. but they are in other places. Okay. So they put those names here. Have the oldest, like everything here. Basically, started. basically, Jinja is your old town. Yeah. So, like I told you, the settlement of Indians became uh, quite big because of the construct or constru the construction of the Uganda Railway. Mm -hmm. So, what happened is when the British were um, starting this whole journey, mm -hmm. the only people who uh, who had the technology were the, were the Indians who knew how to, who who knew how to build, but also. It was cheap labor. They had, there was like enough manpower. So they brought them. Now, when they went to India to collect these people, what would happen is that an Indian would come with his brother, his mother, his father, his sister, and wife, and all that. Mm -hmm. That is because they were not certain how long they would take, they would take constructing this. And they were not sure if they would still go back to their homes mm -hmm. or if they would survive. Mm -hmm. So they would come and, like, a whole family comes to do their work. And each of them would be paid. 
It is the oldest Indian temple. Yeah. Oh. In the country. The office. Why the office? Why is the bar? Uh, yeah, you office? work in the night. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, formerly a hotel, this building here. Yeah. Called Nile View. Because you'd view the hotel, you'd view the Nile from just down there. And all these residents were for the British. So when the British came here, they, dis they, di they changed the whole residence system. So the buildings that you see around were mainly for the, uh, the, the British. British. Mm -hmm. So the Indians uh, stayed in town. You are going to go there, you see. Look at that. This is a very old building. Yeah, oh, this one. These are buildings that trace back from about 1930. But that building on the right there used to be the, the Ginger District head offices. Okay. And then right this, uh, you see here, you, you can right usually we go like in front there on top of that. You see that? Uh, that Clock. Clock tower. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can get up and, and be able to view Ginger okay. all through. So that is the Ginger City Hall. The, this the, the oldest right? post office. The oldest post office? Yeah. oldest uh, storage building in the country is what you see here. This was built in 1919, Mad Van Building. Mad Van Building. It's the headquarters of the Mad Van group of companies who are the leading producers of sugar in the whole of East Africa. Okay. Yeah. How comes I don't know that company? Mad Van, oh my god. They're... Don't take your sugar. And they, the biggest export, they're also the biggest exporters of sugar still in, in East Africa. Police station ahead of you. Which you see? 1928. Yeah, now that's the oldest. Uh, this it's the oldest police station uh, in the country. Uh, it was also built in 1928, but you realize that that's around the time when the railway, the construction of the railway line, had reached Ginger, and there was a lot of prime rate. So that's when the British decided to put up a, a, a police station so that they can manage. Yeah, we are going straight. So as you can see, Ginger is different in ways. From the other side where we were, where you said it's all down, now here there's like the middle Ginger and then there's downtown. So as you proceed ahead, you reach, you got like the downtown Ginger. Ginger means stone. Stone? Stone. Yeah, like stone. Yeah, it means stone. I have not seen any stones. So the stones were mainly on the Ripon Falls where I was showing you. Uh, back, back in the time before the, 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 the waterfalls was submerged, there were so many rocks and Ginger was a small fishing village. So it was majorly known for the fish. Yeah, we're going straight and then we shall turn left. So it was majorly known for the fishing, you know, culture. So those fishermen would go on the rocks that were on the, on the waterfall to tap the fish that would be brought by the, the much water coming from the lake. So these guys would come on those rocks and tap the, the fish, easily catch it. So in so doing, the easy communication was if you, you'd ask anyone, like, you know how a place becomes common because of its being used so much, eh? Like, where, where are you going? I am going to the stone in <laughs> Akujinja. Uh -huh. hey, where, where, is, where, where is Olivia? Olivia is at the stone. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, so the, the stone became very famous. Uh -huh. and, and because fishing also was the most common activity, so because of the fishing and relationship to the stone, uh -huh. the name now Jinja is the, the name Jinja locally. Uh -huh. Jinja, Jinja, I've gone to the Jinja like that. Eh? Uh -huh became the most famous word that eventually made the name Ginger. Now we are out of town. So the way Ginger is made, downtown we've left it. So this is highway. So this can take you to Tororo. This takes you to the other further districts. Kamuli, the rest of the eastern. So we are going to see uh, a place called Mpumude Hill and also the Raleigh Museum. And then we can go bungee jumping.
know why Uga why Kampala is very developed mm -hmm. is because they adapted the British rule quickly and they harnessed the British and brought them and accepted them, okay. accepted all the guns, all the ammunitions. Mm -hmm. So the British would use African leaders uh, to promote slave trade. Mm -hmm. So they would convince the African leaders because they found that like, in Uganda oh, and maybe the rest of Africa, there were already organized governments, the kingdoms, the chiefdoms. Mm -hmm. So they would manipulate the kings mm -hmm. and uh, give them favors mm -hmm. in exchange for labor, which were the slaves. Mm -hmm. But the king of Bunyoro totally refused that. Mm -hmm. He refused to give away his people mm -hmm. to the British for anything. Mm -hmm. Even when the British would try to use the, the same Ugandan people to go and attack them, the British people would still fight back. You would need, you'd need a thousand, a thousand armed Baganda men to fight a hundred Banyoro men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are you saying? Banyoro people, they are very strong men. They're, they're, very, they're not just strong, but they're also tactical. C-section started in Africa, in Uganda, and by the Banyoro people. You can Google it, you can read about it. What? Wow. <laughs> no, I've learned something. <laughs> so it's, it was one of those great kingdoms that uh, actually many of all the other kingdoms split from. Uganda came from Bunyoro, mm -hmm. Toro came from Bunyoro, Ankole came from Bunyoro. So they would just, sections of individuals would split off, mm -hmm. then they go start another kingdom. But the kingdom in its sense still remained very strong. So, so the, if you've heard of the Uganda matters, Kawaka Mwanga is the guy who murdered, who led, who ordered for the killing of the Uganda matters. All the guys who came and claimed they were believing in God, there's a king of kings, mm -hmm. someone who is claiming to be above all all uh, all, all kings all kings mm -hmm. so he's like i am your king mm -hmm. who is that king above me <laughs> show me and then these guys couldn't show the king mm -hmm. so you don't show the king you die because <laughs> you're trying to disobey mm -hmm. the king in buganda kingdom the king is the supreme person mm -hmm. so the, uh, the british uh got those two kings and they exiled them to seashells uh king mwanga did not did, die died there he wasn't able to make it back, but his remains were brought back to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But the king of Bunyoro, mm -hmm. with his might and strength, mm -hmm. he still was able to come back. And he, tr he was trying to go back to his kingdom. And when he reached this hill particularly, mm -hmm. that is where he died. He couldn't proceed. But he knew he had lost strength. He knew he was going to die. So he sat down and then he said, ah, allow me to rest. rest. At this point, I have rested. So that is how the name Pumude comes about. Look at that view. As far as you can see all these houses, that's all Pumude. Mpumude. So you see that? Over there? Where? What? On top of the hill? Uh -huh. Would you guess what that is? So that is the king's palace. The king of uh, the Soga kingdom, that is the palace. But it is only ceremonial, mm. currently, mm -hmm. because the current king mm -hmm. comes from a chiefdom mm -hmm. that is not this chiefdom. Okay. And that palace is in the chiefdom mm -hmm. of, this ki of the chief here. Mm -hmm. So there is a bit of uh, uh, chiefdom fights. Mm -hmm. So the king does not sleep there because he believes that maybe something wrong could happen to him. Uh, so he usually goes back to his chiefdom. Uh, where you see that road, that road proceeds all the way uh -huh. up to up to the north, next to Lake Choga. Uh -huh. Lake Choga. Lake. You call it Choga, we call it Kyoga. Kyoga. It's Cho, Choga. Choga. <laughs> but it's written as Kyoga. It's K-Y. K-Y uh -huh. in all our dialect here. It's Cho. It's Cho. Where the king rested. Okay. This particular spot. Uh, but his body is not here. No, no, his body is not here. They took his body to his kingdom. That's where he was buried. Mm -hmm. But this is where he, he uh, according he to African tradition, kings don't die. Mm -hmm. So he was. He also rested because that is what he said mm -hmm. uh, when he was. You know, Look at the, at the way these stones. How comes the, the roots, the roots are gone. holding the stones? Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's supposed to be eleven shrines here. Mm -hmm. Each of the shrines representing a chiefdom mm -hmm. for the entire kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see, you see this storied building. 
here. Uh, sorry, which one? Yeah, this red one, yes. There is a red one here. and there is another in front yeah, of it. Uh -huh. As you go like this, uh -huh. then there's a small hill. Yeah, I can see a hill. Besides, uh -huh. that hill, that is uh, a man-made hill. Huh? Yes, it's a man-made hill, which is sits somewhere in the middle of the water. So it's more of an island. Okay. With an, an inlet and an outlet. What happened is that, as I was telling you, mm -hmm. when the British came here, mm -hmm. they used some of the Africans or some of the Ugandan people mm -hmm. to fight against against these fellow Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a gentleman who was called um, Semei Kakungu. When he came here, at the time Busoga, kingdom, Busoga was becoming a kingdom, mm -hmm. he wanted to be the king. So he decided to create his own empire by creating a new hill, mm -hmm. but which was in the middle of the water. So he could see the enemies coming from the water side mm -hmm. and the ones coming from the land side. There was a rebellion. Mm -hmm. So the rebellion pushed him away. Then he proceeded up to the far east in Mbale. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Mbale, mm -hmm. Mbale city, you'll be able to find a place which is called the Kakunguru Hill. Mm -hmm. And his tombstone, is, his tomb is also there. That's mm -hmm. where he died. The train line happening in East Africa all was a British idea. It started in England. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is that when the explorers, I don't know which explorers you guys know in Kenya, mm -hmm. but for us here in Uganda we have Sasa Malbeka, John Speak. Is when yeah. they discovered the Nile. Yeah, the not discovered. The first British he explorer. He named it. The first British explorer to, to see. see it. To see, oh. <laughs> And then he said, he said like he had discovered a sea which never existed. Because that that's what the there. British will always want to credit for anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You know, because of British supremacy, they claim to have discovered the source of the Nile. They claim all those things. In so doing, they're trying to manipulate. They're trying to create an establishment of how they will put grounds and controls. Now, Africa, back then, for us, we, we had our forms of transactions. Uh, just like you can see the picture here. These guys are moving, they are transacting goods. Uh, they are probably they are traders, they are taking goods either for butter trade to exchange them with cowrie shells. You used to use, use cowrie shells. Okay. So when these British men come here, they find the doors, they, they now introduce the first currency, which was the first currency to work in the rest of East Africa, the five cent. Now, this, the major name was called the door. Yeah, it looks like a stamp. You see, this is Uganda, mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. Tanganyika. Yes. So this was the currency which we used all through. But this is in the 18, in 1880s and 1870s. So these are some of the artifacts, the lighting. One unique thing about this one, these are lanterns, eh? Mm -hmm. You need a lantern? Yes. So you know how they produce more light? Uh -huh. So what these guys did is they created a, a reflector behind it, you see that? Oh yeah. So the, the sort reflector of uh -huh. and it ref, it's concave, it's concave, so it reflects light and creates a beam of light. Is, is it the same concept as this one? No, this is different. Now this one will converge the light. Okay. Yeah. So it will make the light smaller. It will converge the light and make it smaller, uh -huh. so that if say you're reading and because I'm paying attention to something, uh -huh. it's easier to read there. So this but is now this, is, of this, one. this is technology that was developed, brought in at the time when we did have a high power. Uh -huh. Now this is the train bridge where we were. Uh -huh. This one was completed in 2019. We started building it in 1926. And it's completed in 1929. So that's the back end construction I was telling you. Mm -hmm. And also it marked the connection of Mombasa and Kampala. Yeah, and from here you can see the river was tiny. The river mm -hmm. Nile was tiny. Yeah, the river Nile was not tiny. It was lower, much lower. But you can see all this was uh, reclined there. Eh? Okay. Yeah. So first class is for the British? Yeah, first third class for the British. First, first. Second, yes, second class for the Asians mm -hmm. and third class for the natives. In the first class, and this is how you see the first class is. And even the booking platforms, eh? the booking, this is a wall, they will put a very huge wall to prevent the natives from, from interrupting with the, with the British. You stay on the other side, they stay on this side. So the British could easily book on the same booking platform with the, with the, with the Asians, that's why it's first and second class. And the Asians could also book from the third class, but for them, they would choose mainly the first section. There is the leather, leather bags. Those leather bags were like um, used when they were collecting uh, money uh, at the station. So this guy would put it here and it's his wallet. Mm. So we put all the money in 
Yeah. So you come you, you come with the railway? Mm-hmm. You come with the railway? Go by boat. You go by boat? Go by road. And then by road, mm-hmm. but using the same same ticket? Yes. Okay, that was convenient. Yeah, that's how they, they tried to put it. Documentaries, mm-hmm. movie nights, so people come sit here mm-hmm. and watch movie nights on the train. Oh, this is cute, yeah. But this is nice. Yeah, apart from the toilet. <laughs> the toilet is. The bathroom is decent. Yeah, the bathroom is decent. <laughs> and this was kitchen? Okay. Yeah, sorry. So this kitchen, you had, you had your, this is your cooking cabin, the sink. Banji Uganda. Oh, you take doing, a leap of faith. Yeah, we're actually doing this. I can't believe it. it can never be me. Ah, this is. If I manage this one, trust me, I'll I'll do skydive. Now, guys, I'm at Banji Uganda. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. You can see that crane over there. We'll be jumping from that crane over there. You remember yesterday when we were tubing? We passed by there, and someone was we were encouraging someone to jump. Now it's my turn. I think I'm now getting some nerves. <laughs> the reality <laughs> is checking in. Somebody pray for me. I'm scared. Can you do bungee jumping? One thing off my bucket list. <laughs> Adi was so scared. I was so scared. But then I was the des- designated photographer. I could not panic for a minute. But I'm yet to work out my nerves to be able to do that. <laughs> she was holding our wheels. I know we don't have much, but the little we had, we had left it in her hands to execute our wheels. Yes. <laughs> But guys, there's never been an accident here, like ever. So you can trust them. Don't even tell yourself you're jumping. Just know you're just taking a leap of faith. Patrico. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he deserves an hour, eh? Yeah? <laughs> Actually, I wanted him to touch water, but I don't know why he never feel enough to touch water. <laughs> 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 Let's we go together like this. Yes. Let's put my water touch. 
<laughs> so guys, you can go with yeah, okay, they can tie the harness in either in your legs or in your waist. I decided to go for the one in my in my oh, waist. He went with his feet, yeah? yeah? Yeah, he went with his feet with his like his hands yeah. forward, uh -huh. but I went with my like my entire body. That is what they were saying. I felt like, like that's why you kept I, I felt I felt like a, a, a what? A sack of a potatoes. Sack of <laughs> And when, when she was received by the life server, server she oh, just, just like just, she was just lying take it. it. <laughs> just lying. <laughs> wow, that was so thrilling. I will do this again and again. Now, here are the charges. If you are a Ugandan resident, okay, if you are a Ugandan, you pay 200,000 Ugandan shillings. If you are an East African, you pay $100. And if you are a foreigner, you pay $115. Foreign and resident. To give your life away. I'm in heaven. Ugandan food. Morning. We are still in Jinja. Yesterday we were too late. We could not get the cabins again. But we got this place. It was recommended by Vin and it was it was fairly priced. A hundred a hundred K Ugandan shillings per room we got to and it comes with breakfast. Wages a piece of chicken. Chicken wing. One piece of uh, um, like bread and, and eggs. And then, of course, it looks like every food you get served in Uganda has a piece of banana. I love ginger. The only downside to ginger are the roads, the access roads. The main highways are good, but the access roads need some grading. Our pal is suffering, but we are managing. <laughs> also, these houses are not listed on Airbnb or Booking.com. Yeah. So you really just struggle to find accommodation unless you know a local who can refer mm -hmm. you to one. Yeah. So come ready when you're already booked somewhere. Yeah. Even for the number of days, if you're sure you're staying for two days, two, two three days, just book. For just book days. already for those days. Because because, because the, the the accommodations are around the same place and Ginger is not so big, so you cannot say that you'll have a problem accessing this or that or something is very far or a facility is very or a facility is very far. So wherever you book, if it is if you get there and it is a nice place. Just book for the for the rest of the days. We could have gone to, to Kampala at night, but we are told that on Fridays, especially if you are going there maybe in the evening, there is some serious jam that you can stay even for four hours. People go to all the way to Kampala to have party because everyone we are telling that we're going to Kampala, they are like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we are going to have a very nice party time and nightlife. So. We won't miss out on that. They weren't dancing again <laughs> yesterday night. I was dancing last night. We came back at 4.30, was it? Literally, yes. Yeah, it was 4. 4. It was so much fun. So basically, they have slept for like 4 hours. <laughs> now I'll be forced to be the driver. Now that yeah. is the entire group. <laughs> <laughs> we are here again, gathered to have some fun. We are going to the waterfall. What's the name of the waterfall? Busowoko. Busowoko. Mm. Busowoko waterfall. I don't know what to expect there, but he says it's cool, it's cool place. So let's go. If, if he says it's a nice place, I believe him. Let's go. the best women, women. Today. from my perspective as a man yeah. mm -hmm. I wouldn't risk dating a Muganda woman Why? she the ones that kneel down yeah 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 you see <laughs> you see in that discipline the, 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 the in that pretense of discipline wow. yeah. there is a lot of exploitation True. Wow. there are million exploitation there is always something they're after there's there's like a lot of hiding like a oh, lot so it's so I would general. rather so the, man, the, the, the they are the taught to be like that like from the nurturing eh? mm -hmm. they are nurtured to be creepy, they are nurtured to be mm -hmm. like it's a nurturing and it's perfectly made. Mm -hmm. I would not, I want someone natural, I want it to be real. Ah! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this <Wow>. was mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway. Oh, why the 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 Nyatesos? You know, Atesos are very committed people. Like, uh, it's a group of people. You know, they're more like Kijongs, yeah? because they broke off from the Kijongs, the Karamojongs. Uh huh. Uh, they are. I feel like they're disciplined. They're loyal. They are loyal. They are disciplined. Though, in their reality, they are very strict. Mm hmm. Like. They're principled. Principled, like yeah. the pri A is A. If any day A changes to B, they are gone. Like. You would yeah, no compromise. So the, our Luo women here, the, like the Acholis, the Langis, mm. the uh, uh, question marks. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, but also, yeah, we maybe are the Langis, like that. Mm. maybe the Langis, but Acholis. Mm. Ah, don't risk. I wouldn't risk an Acholi. <laughs> I, I could risk for a Langi, but not an Acholi. <laughs> I, 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 um. yeah, you're too now, careful. Now they are those we call the look bars. Eh? What the, look, the look bars are West Nile, West Nile eh? in the far north, like no, almost like oh. the Nile, then on the other side of the Nile. Are there Nilots, Bantus, or what? No, the other ones or are Kushites. Mm, so, I'm not sure. Uh, over Hamites, over, I think they're the Hamites Nile or Hamites. something. Nile Hamites, yeah, they're actually the Nile Hamites. Now, those ones are everything tough. <laughs> 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 the, the women are the men, they are everything, like. I don't know how their men even act. The ones that build their own house. Forget about them. It's not even, for them. For them, they no. do everything, and they are tough. They actually the own. They are the ones who protect the home. No, what do do their what men do? do? That's, why that's why I wonder because I feel like their men are very inferior, and the, the women are very outspoken. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear of a Lukbar man like in public or even in, in public places in mm. political power. Mm. You don't hear any Lukbar man. Really? But you, if a woman is there, ooh, she will roar like a lion. No, I need to go there. <laughs> when I look at a woman is anywhere in a top position, in a position of power, uh -huh. she will roar like a lion. No, if, no. if it's an organization and she's the boss, uh -huh. everybody will have uh -huh. to What a man can down. do, a woman can do better. <laughs> <laughs> so for Ugandan men, for most Ugandan men who want uh, to be bowed down to, uh -huh. like that's a woman you cannot risk marrying. Because okay. all your power will be will go. Uh -huh. Then you'll be bow. there like <laughs> who will bow? <laughs> like those bo boat men, eh? Mm. Yeah. Guys sleep. But I think the other people help help them out. Now you dance. What? I don't know how to dance. Extreme dubbing, eh? Okay. So that's, it's, that's grade, it's grade five. The what? waterfall is grade five. So you come from this way like this, you come, then you reach there and... But you must know how to swim, right? No, no, no. You just need a life jacket. You're not you. Oh my God. And then the you have a guide. you away. No. Keep floating. Ah. Yes. Yeah, it's for it's fun. Me, yeah, I don't swim, but I do these things almost every other time. Hi. An entire Nasara is here. I know. You see where the kids are playing mm -hmm. from? Eh? Mm -hmm. They were rocks down. So oh. they, this, they we had to the locks, they kept on removing the locks. Mm -hmm. And then organizing it, you see how like, the rocks are carved? Eh? Mm -hmm. So they made like uh, an actual pool. Mm -hmm. So people have where, kids have where they can play from. It's shallow. Mm -hmm. So they can play from there and the rocks down don't cut their feet. Mm -hmm. But they are still like having a good time and enjoying it. See the water is a bit more turbulent here. They call it the rapids. So that is why you can see those guys doing some rafting. In fact, behind us, those guys will be doing some rafting there. Ah. Woo! 
is like a beach eh? so somehow when they come the boat gets stuck there and it cannot move but there's really enough to do it eh? so the kayak stays in one position when the water is all moving oh. We are going back to Jinja and then we'll proceed all the way to Kampala but that was so much fun. It can be a whole day activity. The road is a bit uh, bumpy but once you get there, trust me, it's totally, totally worth it. So far, Uganda has been just the best, best place. You feel like you're free to do anything. It's like we are just at home but in a different environment. So, And we are hoping that Kampala will be, will be good to us just like Jinja has been good. This is our route. We've already left the rough road. We are now in the tarmac road. So, Vin is leaving us. Vin, say bye. Yeah, it's been great. It's been um, quite a lovely time uh, with these beautiful uh, friends of mine from um, from Mombasa. I was telling them my experience, uh, what I had in Mombasa. <laughs> I starved because I couldn't find food. <laughs> but now that they are there, I'm not going to starve anymore because I've made sure that they don't starve right here in Uganda. I'm going to miss you guys. If you need a guide in Jinja, highly recommended. So we'll give you the contact yeah. so that if you need any bookings, he's here. He will take you to very nice places. I loved the water massage. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, it's the only the only place uh, along the Nile that you can get to have that massage. I'll I'll do some facial later, maybe mm. when I go back home. But massage. But don't use sunscreen again, eh? I have, I have to use sunscreen, <laughs> guys. Just imagine he think he says that because we are Africans and we have so much melanin, we don't need sunscreen. Yeah, we shouldn't be burned by the sun. And we cannot no have sunburns. Yeah. Just how untrue is that? The railway museum. Yeah, he operates a cafe here and he's also a guide here. So if you need to see him or if you need to find him, you can come to the railway museum. And you've seen the open days, open from Tuesday to Sunday. He's the Ugandan version of uh, Luya. You can see he carried some tea. <laughs> tea time is tea time. <laughs> <laughs> now we are just going to take a photo there and then we go all the way to Kampala. We are hoping that we can get some chicken along the road. You know where the chicken is? Emma? Nama Wojolo. Nama Wojolo. Yeah. Hey, you people. <laughs> Your names.
Bagus ini di The the famous what's the name of the stage? Namawajolo. Yes, this is the famous Namawajolo stage where they'll bring chicken. If just if we could get here and open our windows, I'm telling you, chicken could be all over our faces. <laughs> You'll be tempted to bite, like someone I saw. Adia, <laughs> 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 Adia thinks that this is not real chicken. It's too sweet. Mm. Yeah. Well, chicken, but in Kenya, but it never gets to taste it's this so sweet. Like yeah? I think it's just salt. It's, it's just, just salt. salt. Yeah. So it is natural, healthy. natural through and through. Yeah. When you pass by here, ensure you try them. Okay, they'll be they're so competitive, they'll call they and, and aggressive, but not in a bad way. They won't steal from you or anything. You just buy a couple of them and support the community as you also enjoy. Don't buy from people who are yeah. it. Try to go and get hot ones from sauce. Yeah, directly yeah. from the grill. Yeah. No regrets here. Yeah, we've also taken some roasted bananas. Just some I think they are sweet bananas which have been roasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are very very delicious. Yeah. So guys, let's continue with our journey to Kampala. Where is this place? Lugazi. the name of this town? Mukono. Is it Lukono or Mukono? Mu, it's an M. Eh? Mukono. Yeah, Mukono. They also have an Namawajolo there. So yeah. <laughs> you know Mukono in Kenya means hand. They do it a lot. You won't even write. Hi, we are in Kampala. I'm about to give you a brief tour of the Airbnb that we had booked somewhere in Kampala. If you're just bumping into this video, it is an entire series. We started our journey in Mombasa, we went all the way and, uh, to Eldoret, we slept there on the first day, and then we, went, we came all the way to Jinja. We've stayed in Jinja for three days, yes, because we've, stayed, we've slept there for three nights, and uh, we've done a couple of activities. Just go and check them out. Jinja is good vibes, and it's the bomb. It's a touristic destination. I totally recommend it. So right now, we are in Kampala. We just got here yesterday in the evening at around 9 p.m. So we just woke up, guys. We were so exhausted from the water massage. So guys, this is a very beautiful space. I would like you to check it out. And first of all, before you get in, look at this. Isn't that awesome? I tell you, some hosts are extra. Now, this is our neighborhood. Look at that. See, it looks like most houses in Kampala have red roofs. I don't know what is it with the red roofs. People who live in Kampala, please tell me, because it's all red. I don't understand, but we are not complaining. Welcome. So this is the living room. This is the living room. You can see it's a very, very magnificent place. It's themed white and black mostly, and 
attaches of yellow and gold here and there. The host is well traveled. There's a book that they've already written their entire journey, working Wi-Fi. Actually, this is the first place we've had very fast Wi-Fi in since we came to Uganda. Uh, right here, it's a bit windy, but this is the dining area. It can accommodate up to six people, but we only booked for two. So one of the bedrooms has been locked. It is an open plan kind of kitchen. We'll be staying here for three nights. This is, we, yesterday was the first night. We have two more nights here in Kampala because we feel like Kampala has a lot to offer and we want to check out most of those places that have been recommended to us by friends, by on the, on the internet, and all those kinds of review. Like I said, this host is extra. She has offered basically everything. There are spices in here, there is coffee. You can literally cook. You just come with the main dish and you'll get all the spices here. This is the second house in Uganda where we are getting this French press. You remember in the, at the cabin, we had another one and this is another one. I don't know what is it with the with Ugandans with the French press. I think they're just fancy people because in Kenya we don't usually give just, we just offer coffee the automatic coffee machine. Cooking pans here and more utensils. There's a rice cooker. Basically, it feels like home. And then there is this balcony here with a nice place to sit. You can just sit here and enjoy the view of Kampala. Like I said, red roofs. This is an entire booklet filled with contents about this house. Like I said, these guys are extra. You see, this is the couple, this is the host. They are well traveled. You can see they have been to China, Austria, Kenya. In fact, they told us that they, they had their honeymoon in Kenya. That is why when we told them that we are from Kenya, they were so excited to invite us. It's just a, to help you find your way around the house and around Kampala. They have actually suggested several places to visit, restaurants. They have given us contacts for even the border borders. You can, when, if you read this, you are equipped to stay in Kampala. So let's go. So uh, this is the master bedroom. The, this is the master bedroom. We slept here yesterday night. We slept soundly. That is why we woke up this late. Even though some of us went partying. <laughs> some of us went partying and I'm told Kampala has the vibe, the partying, the partying vibe. Uh, there is like a street full of clubs. Imagine a, a, a street full of clubs. Now people just do club hopping. There's, no, there, there's nothing like staying in one club until later you go home. People here hop from one club to another, from one club to another, until when they get to the end of the street and then now they go home. It is the Kampala way. <laughs> Even people from Ginger come all the way to party here. There's enough storage space for your clothes and shoes and all that. And then it is in suite. There's the toilet here. They actually offer a machine, a washer here. We intend to use it. It's one of the reasons we booked this place because they have a couple of dirty clothes. And then they have a decent bathroom behind here with very hot water. The water is hot enough, you can regulate. Now, this is the second bedroom. But since we booked for only two bedrooms, this one is locked. Now we have this other bedroom. Yes, this is a, the other one is a king size bed. This one is a queen size bed. Just a basic, a basic bedroom, but it has plenty of decorations. If you love interior deco, you love this. Okay, there is a common bathroom that is used for anyone who's using this bedroom. This one, it's a common bathroom and toilet. It can also be used by the guests. Uh, other than that, I think it is a it is a fancy space, right? Fancy. Yeah, comfortable, it, comfortable, comfortable. fancy, and and actually they also offer this. I forgot to mention, there are plenty of sweets and biscuits here. Like I said, they're extra. They thought about everything when they were furnishing this apartment. Literally everything. There are fans all over. Even if you turn like this, there's just anything you might need in your house. They have it here. So if you come to Kampala and you need a place to stay, this is a very convenient place. In fact, it's just 
next to the main road, to the tarmac road, so you don't have to go through the other access routes or what. You can't get lost. You just use the Google map and ensure you use the the tarmac road. It's usually seventy-one dollars, but we got it at a discounted price, sixty-one dollars. Okay, you had that, sixty-one dollars. I know it's a bit late, it's about 4, oh my god, it's about 4 p.m. but we need to see what, how Kampala looks like so that we can plan for tomorrow on how we can explore it further. But right now we're just going to check out Kampala and see how it looks because we got here very late at night and being a Sunday I'm not expecting any jam. Guys, jams in Kampala are serious from what we saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was insane, it was really insane. I hope that those those roads can be widened a bit because they are a bit tiny. That is why there is all that jump. But for now, guys, let's go to the city. I've seen another school. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to show you when I when when you return or maybe tomorrow. But it's a beautiful school, you think it's a flat. Now the question is where do kids play? Muchomo grill. Grill is muchomo. They have a tendency of repeating the same words, like where we say is, is Maisha. Maisha living, because Maisha is life. Living is just living. So guys, we wanted to have a tour guide around Kampala. We found their, their charges a bit too high. Someone was charging us 300,000. It's way beyond our budget, but if you can afford it, by all means get one. So we just decided to take ourselves around using the Google map. So we decided to just use the Google map. And our Google map tells us that this is the Northern Bypass. It actually looks good. We are going to take this left turn. We are trying to get to the Kampala city center. I think this is the same route to Masaka and Fort Portal. We'll go to Fort Portal at some point. I like the roads here. So there are plenty of motorcycles. I don't know how they call them here. In Rwanda, they, they call them moto. In Kenya, we call them boda boda. Um, I think it's, there are also boda bodas here. Boda boda. There's a market here. Biva Muntuyo. Market owners. Oh, that, those are the market owners, but there is a market on my left. Kampala is the home for Makerere University. The Makerere University is one of the best universities in East Africa from back, back in history. Many people used to come and do um, Form 5 and Form 6. After they finish their high school, they go for higher, a senior high school, or I don't know how they call it, but it's... A-level. A-level. Is it A? A-levels. A-levels. Oh, okay. So there are plenty of buildings coming up. And here we go, portals. Portals seem to be the order of day in, in Uganda. Their highways are very good, but the access routes are not so good. That is Makerere University. So guys, we don't know much about these places. We are just driving around to see how the city looks like. We do not have enough fuel, but uh, we are going to add some fuel. 
so that we can just drive around Kampala and see how it looks like in general. We do not know these places. But if you know where these places are, you can comment below so that all of us can, can learn more about this city. the real streets of Kampala. This whole building is for Ikiti. Eight hundred per piece. Fanta with no sugar, like seriously. Now this is the street where there are so many clubs, you can see there, there is La Terrazzo, there is Cielo Lounge, uh, this entire street is usually full of clubs at night. And then they also have like some sort of cultural market, where they sell the cultural items like this, those kitengas, in Kenya we call them Maasai markets. Yeah, they even sell the um, the ankole, the horns of the ankole ankole cow. They're being sold there. Now, from what I gather, or from what I have seen, I think I've seen most parts of Kampala. If there any, there's any place I've not passed by, please tell me, even though I won't even know the place, because I don't know the places of this, the names of these places. But so far we've seen the uptown, the downtown, and the city centre. You can see, this now, this, here are the skyscrapers, there are not so many, but they are very beautiful. The few that are there are very beautiful. And that beautiful sunset, oh my god. I think Uganda has very, very nice sunsets so far. For, for a city that does not have an ocean, it has really, really nice sunsets.
So guys, it's been a pleasure touring Kampala. I thought it the last time I was there, it, it looked like just how the downtown Kampala looks only. I don't go to the downtown Kampala, but I'm glad that this time I've seen the high-end sites and it's pretty fancy. Till the next video, guys, when we'll be exploring Kampala historical sites and other uh, touristic attractions. Bye and see you tomorrow very early in the morning. Good morning. So guys, this is the day when we are going to explore different sites in, a, in Kampala. But first, we need some breakfast. If you've been following our journey, we, have, we came all the way from Mombasa to Eldore. To, we stayed at Jinja for a couple of days. So far, I've not gone to different sites in Kampala, but Jinja is my favorite city so far. Let's see what Kampala has to offer. I'm excited. We are going to specific places, so I'm sure we'll just use the Google map. And something about Kampala, the Google maps usually take you round and round. Like, they don't give you like the direct routes. I don't know why, but it will take you round and round. Let's hope that won't happen today. Or else we'll be forced to go and park somewhere. And then take more border borders again. And spoil this look. The soil here is quite red. And I'm in white. I have to fuel fast because we are going to do a lot of trips around the city. Mm -hmm. When you come here, do not be surprised if you see the security guards having like real guns. They have real guns with bullets. <laughs> While in Kenya they have rungus. It is either this is a very risky country. Or in Kenya, we are just jokers. Which one is it? <laughs> so we are headed to Kasumbi Royal Tombs. That is where the Kabakas, Uganda's kings, were buried. As far as we know. Yes. Most of these historical sites are, are in the residential area. It's not like the, like in Mombasa or in a stone town, Zanzibar, where the, the, the historical sites are, are within the same area. So you have to, if you take a motorbike, you will be fine because there are so many turns and routing of the Google Maps. So if you get someone who knows exactly where those places are, it will be much easier for you. This is where we are supposed to get in. Actually, this is their fence. It's made of bamboo. We have been directed by a local that that is not the main gate, so I don't know which one is, but we'll find out soon. The only you see that's the house. Okay. It's the main gate. Okay. okay. Then this one, it is the second one. This place is where the royal members of Uganda are buried. Mm -hmm. This one is the main entrance of the town. So, Kyoto, sir, one, he was the owner of this palace, the owner of this place. Okay. So, when he died, he was the first king to be buried here. So, then those rings, they do represent the clans of Uganda. Meaning, there are 50 clans, clans in Uganda, okay. Kyoto. Okay. So, that so each one of them is represented by a totem, like the one you said, mushroom, uh, buffalo. Mushroom, buffalo elephant, mm -hmm. uh, lion. Yes, I've seen some lion at the gate. Uh, low pad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Drums. And the same drums we use them for entertainment. Just mm -hmm. for the party, mm -hmm. we use the same drums. Mm -hmm. Cultural women are not supposed to enter this house. Okay. The reason is the man who plays the drums is called Kaula. Mm -hmm. Kaula just a title given to him. It's not his name. Mm -hmm. He comes from Pangolin clan. You know that animal called Pangolin? Pangolin, Pangolin yes. Yeah. It has some very... Scales. Yes, the body. Yeah. So that money comes from that Pangolin clan. Mm -hmm. He's a writer when he dies, the Pangolin clan seeks some children's successor. But why women cannot enter there is that that man is supposed to stay a safe battle life. Oh. It doesn't so, matter. So to avoid any temptation. Yes. Mujabusu. Mujabusu. He's the first seat drop. Mm -hmm. It is played when there's a royal function in the palace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of the instrument of the king. Then the second one is called Vantade. Banter that is played when the royal members are entering the palace and departing from the palace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then in Kanaba, it is played when one of the royal members has passed on. 
so they communicate with the public. Yes, for the man you can enter, you see the drums. Now they used to make gomesi with this one? Yes. This is the back cloth. I see. How it is made? We, made, we make it. Make this one. We make it from a fig tree, African fig tree. That's uh -huh. the tree. That one, that one. So we remove the skin of that tree. Uh -huh. We bring a wooden hammer. Uh -huh. We pond. The essence of ponding is to remove that outside layer. Uh -huh. Then we remain with this. This one now? Yeah, stretching. Uh -huh. Stretching it. Have you guys commercialized this? Yes, even we have them there. You're supposed to like commercialize it so that it can become some sort of your original we design or something. Ah, uh, we are selling them here. You are going to see them there. Oh. For us, we go. In fact, for us now, now right now we don't put them as clothes, mm -hmm. but we go ahead to add value on them by painting our different compositions, mm -hmm. the fine art. Uh -huh. So like the wildlife, the zebra, oh, the so elephants. Oh, so it becomes the canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the canvas. You know, here in Uganda, women, uh, women were so hardworking. Mm -hmm. The work of men during that time was just eat food. <laughs> eat food <laughs> to eat food and fatten. And drinking. Water. Who protected the community? <laughs> yeah. uh, the community automatically, they were done protecting, but uh, that one it was not just so. But uh, in terms of work, domestic work, mm -hmm. women. Even construction houses. Even construction houses? Uh, women used to construct. <laughs> you men yeah. had too much. Yeah. <laughs> so now, you see hardworking mothers. We go ahead to add them here. Mm -hmm. When she's carrying the baby on the back, fire within the head, mm -hmm. we're teaching the daughter what to do. So you receive some of those souvenirs there. So you mm -hmm. have them there. Muzibu? Muzilu Azalampanga. We have the tomb of King Manga II, also is buried there. Mm -hmm. We have the tomb of King Daudi Chua II mm -hmm. and King Mutesa II. Mm -hmm. This one became a king when I was only one year old. Huh? Yeah, this one. And how long did he serve? He served for some quite a long time because oh, he ruled from, around, 18, around 40 something. from 1887 up to 1939. So in the big house there, they do bury their only the kings. Sisters, wives, those things are buried for them. Mm -hmm. Those are the princes and the princesses. Mm -hmm. like those are the Muslim princes and princesses. In Uganda, a woman is supposed to greet a man when his name is without. That is the sign of respect ah. and discipline. Yes. But on the side of the princess, a man is supposed to greet the princess of Uganda mm. when he's kneeling down. Like for example, mm -hmm. a 60 year old man will kneel down to greet a four year old princess, princess. of Uganda. Oh, because of the royal status? Yes. <laughs> When you go to any anywhere you go where there is the Kabaka Palace, the Kabaka tombs, all those places, you need to wear dresses. Ladies, wear dresses. In fact, I'm told there is a mosque where we'll have to use a, like a hijab to cover up our hair. And I've carried mine here. So always wear dresses. You're not allowed to get in with your pants or any tight clothes. Where the, the four kings were buried, was still under some renovation, so we could not get in, but we saw the tombs for the princess and the prince for the royal family. Now what, what is interesting is, whenever the king wanted to sign an heir, they would pick a virgin girl. When she gets pregnant, she will never be touched by another man. The heir would always be a secret that is known by just one chief. If other people know about the heir, the the is disqualified from being an heir, the king will have to sire another another heir. That is a very interesting story. <laughs> so guys, we are going to the to the Kabaka's palace. I'm told it's somewhere near this place. So let's go. Out of Kampala? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for quarters fun. Uh -huh. Huh? What did this the lions, yes. yes, they symbolize the king. The king. You know here the king is the most respected of that person. Uh -huh. So you see lions here and at the entrance uh -huh. of the gate, they symbolize him. Many innocent Ugandans were killed from this place mm -hmm. by Idi Amin. At the moment, this is a ceremonial palace. Okay. Our king is only here for meetings, parties and other different occasions, uh -huh. but never to sleep. 
So it is like his, it's his office. Yeah, at times he's at as an office, as in for ceremonies. So now this is the main building in the palace, and this building is called Tuekobe. Tuekobe. Yes, Tuekobe means togetherness oh. in our local language. Okay. And this was built in 1922 by a king called Daudi Chua. I think I know that one. You know that one? Daudi Chua. Yes. From history. Yes, from history. The one year old king. Yes, the, yes. the youngest. Ah. Yes, true. So Daudi Chua was the first ever king of Uganda mm -hmm. to visit another country. You see the structure, it's English. It's British, so. yeah. So when he visited, he saw King Jake's palace, which he really admired so much. And on coming back home, that's the first thing he did. Though he didn't stay here for long, mm -hmm. he stayed until 1939. That's when he died. Yeah. At the age of 43. Mm -hmm. He died of diabetes. Yeah. Too well, sweet. Yeah, too sweet. Of course. <laughs> yeah, when he died, mm -hmm. uh, we had his 15 year old son mm -hmm. coming in as king. Mm -hmm. And this one was called Sir Edward Mutesa. So, Sir Edward was the first ever president of our country, Uganda. In 1962, when we gained independence. Wait, Sir Edward, not Milton Obote? No, 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 it was Sir Edward. So, Sir Edward was the first president and Milton Obote was the executive prime minister. But these two in 1966 got a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Obote, the prime minister, and then our king, the president. Mm -hmm. When they got the misunderstanding, Obote sent soldiers here, mm -hmm. led by the army commander Idi Amin, mm -hmm. intentionally to kill our king. But fortunately, our king escaped, running to exile in England. Mm -hmm. Then this palace was captured and turned into an army barracks. Three years after, in 1969, our king was attacked in London, then poisoned to death by Obote spies. Mm -hmm. So Obote sent two well-trained ladies who poisoned our king through alcohol. Hey, your kings. Yes, yeah, they like drinking. Okay, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's sad, but yeah. the way they die. The way they die, it's funny. <laughs> Diabetes, it mm -hmm. looks like someone likes too much sugar. Uh -huh, no. And then this one, it looks like uh, he mm -hmm. liked women. Yes. Women and course. alcohol. Yeah, but I knew the weakness of our king. <laughs> which was yeah, yeah. So that's how we usually got him. Mm -hmm. And after killing him there, Obote refused to bring back the body to be officially buried at Kasubi. But finally, the body was brought back in 1971. Okay. And the person who brought back the body was Idi Amin, mm -hmm. who had just overthrown Obote from leadership. Okay. But this was a trick. He was trying to win back the hearts of the people, his former enemies, mm -hmm. which was a success because people loved Idi Amin so much in the beginning until when he showed his true colors, being a dictator. Is it true that Idi Amin was a cannibal? No, it's not true. So the British were just exaggerating. Because they, so he was not a cannibal? No, he wasn't. But he killed people, but he wasn't a cannibal. Okay. Yeah. So Amin killed roughly 500,000 people. Mm -hmm. That was roughly 5% of the population in Uganda by the time. Someone. Yeah. And in here, ladies were brought, raped, then killed by Amin and his soldiers. Mm -hmm. The men were killed from the torture chambers, where we shall be going okay. as we go on with the tour. This is a special road in our kingdom. It's called the Royal Mile. Ah. It connects the parliament of our kingdom. So that's the parliament of our kingdom and actually the first modern parliament in East Africa. Oh. Yeah, before Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania had the modern one, Uganda already had one. Okay. Built in 1955. Nice. Yeah, so this road connects the two significant buildings, the palace. So the palace and the, and the parliament. parliament. Yes. So you said it's called? Bulangi. The, 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 like the, road? The, road, yeah, the road is called the Royal Mile. The Royal Mile? Okay. Yes. It's one measured mile from those ladders right there to the ladders on the other pillar. Oh, one mile? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then still, this road has two roundabouts. The mm -hmm. first one is this one, before the gate. Mm -hmm. Only the king passes in the middle. Mm -hmm. Same as the other one in the middle of the road, the there are one two small with the, gates. Yeah, the yeah. one with something like that this. With a long divided shield. drum, yeah. Uh -huh. Still only long our, divided drum? Yeah, that's a long divided drum. Okay. <laughs> still only our king will pass through to the parliament or to the palace. Okay. And then on the sides, hope you saw some statues, monuments. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. The dogs, snakes. Yeah, the dog, lions, snakes, oh, drums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those uh, symbolize the clans we have here. Oh, the totems. Yeah, the totems of the clans. Uh -huh. So here we are clan based. Okay. Every person has a clan, family he or she belongs to. Okay. Yes. So now I'm like my clan. My clan is the antelope. 
You know the antelope? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's my family. And that means I can never kill an antelope. And I'll never eat antelope meat. How will you know? I can cook it so nicely. <laughs> and then if I mistakenly eat it, I'll get a big a rash around my body. Yeah. Yes. So people coming from the cow can never taste beef. <laughs> and then any lady coming from my clan is my sister. That means I can never marry any lady from my clan. I have to look for a father lady from my clan. <laughs> yeah, so that system is very active here in the Banda. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, so now, mm -hmm. in 1971, mm -hmm. Idi Amin hired Israelis mm -hmm. to build him an armory mm -hmm. where he would keep his fighting weapons. Mm -hmm. And this is what they built under the ground. Okay. He only used it for eight months. That's when he had rumors that his former boss Obote was in Tanzania planning to come and attack Uganda. Mm -hmm. So he had to remove out all the weapons and turned it into a torture chamber. That's when he got people from Kampala city and these were Obote's men and other political oppositions. On getting them from Kampala, they were always blindfolded, then thrown in the back of the truck, driven around Kampala for several hours so they wouldn't know well, where they yeah, definitely. But finally, they would end up here within the city. And reaching here, you see this black line? Okay. That was the level of water in this place. And then as we entered on the right, there was an electricity switch. Mm -hmm. So you bring the victims, place them in the water and put on the electricity. Electrocuting them on and off as was questioning them. And after getting the information he wanted, these people were placed in the five cells you see here, mm -hmm. which cells were always packed with victims who would die of starvation and suffocation. And at times, when he had brought others to torture and the cells were really full, he would throw other weakened ones down here and kill them with electricity to provide space for the fresh ones he had brought. Mm -hmm. And after killing them, the bodies were thrown on the streets in Kampala as a warning to other people. Others given to the crocodiles in River Nile and yeah, in River Nile, and others were buried in the mass graves within the palace here. And then there was a rolling gate to cover all the cells, and another heavy metal right there. It had been killed over 26,000 people in this place, wow. and no one ever escaped alive. How could you? I hope he died a painful death. How did he die? Sorry, Idi Amin. So Idi Amin in 19, uh, 1979, after being pushed out of here, he went to his friend Gaddafi in Libya. Mm -hmm. Then in 1982, he came back attacking Uganda. But this time he found Obote well prepared and stronger, so he was resisted back. Mm -hmm. And being resisted, he couldn't go back to Gaddafi. They fell out because Gaddafi had refused him to attack. The other option he had, Saudi Arabia. That's why he went to. And that's why he died in 2003. Died of syphilis and multi organ failure. Ah, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and that's why he was married. Your president is dying in a very funny way. No, syphilis. You've conquered all those people and then syphilis kills you. And multi organ failure. And multi organ The interior from the tree is always framed, so we use a mallet to pound like this. So you wait for this to dry? You know, when it's still fresh on the tree. Okay. And then we pound like that. And this pounding may take seven hours. Then, yes. Yeah, then it will expand five times from the normal size. Even the, like this one? Yeah, it okay. expands. This is just a sample, but if we continue pound it, it will mm. affect this is the destroyed. And the outcome is, of course, you can touch the back. So this is the final piece. Okay. So then this is what we do with my colleagues here in okay. our free time. Okay. And there are we saw something similar in, in, in Rwanda. In Rwanda. Mm -hmm. But this is something typically Ugandan. Okay. This is the Ugandan national bat. Oh,
said what is the name of this? this the, the long divided drum. Long so the divided drum. The middle, only him. Oh, okay. Yes. The rest of us go round. Yeah, most of us go round. Does it, does he ever come? Yes, of course he does. <laughs> Remember your history, correct? Lukiko is the parliament. This is the great Luchiko, the parliament of our. Oh, you not Lukiko, it's Luchiko. You pronounce it as Luchiko. Luchiko, yeah. But <laughs> we always put up the great. The great. Yes, yeah, because it's the great Luchiko. The great, the great Luchiko. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in our country, mm -hmm. we have only two recognized parliaments. Mm -hmm. One for the Republic of Uganda, which is political, mm -hmm. and then this one, which is the ceremonial culture parliament. Okay. And like I told you earlier on, this was the first modern parliament in East Africa, mm. built in 1955. But this parliament is over 900 years old. 900? Yes. So I'm starting from the time when our kingdom started, with our first king called Chintu. Chintu? Yeah, that's in the 1200 AD. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we had the first ever parliament session that was held when he was just enthroned as the first ever king of Uganda. Mm -hmm. And it comes to us. Just to open the new year and it goes to the past year. Mm -hmm. Yes, it just looks like a typical parliament. Yes, like a real, it's a real parliament. It's, mm -hmm. Do those other kingdoms that are not Luganda kingdoms, like the... Who? Banyoro, Banyoro Poro, Soga, yes. yes. Do, they, do they also have such? No, those ones have castles. Okay. They are not parliaments. Are they usually like given this much attention? No, this is the only kingdom given attention here. It's the most recognized kingdom. Even our country, Uganda, got its name from Uganda. Uh -huh. You just put off the B, then you get Uganda. Uh -huh. So it's really a strong, strong kingdom. This is just the same one from back there? Yeah, from him. Him, that is the father. Yes. Right. And him, the father. Him, him, the father. Him, him, the father. The father. And that was the first picture written in Uganda, 1862. That's okay. why you can't see the other kids. Okay. okay. Seventeen years, mm. but it looks like you guys maintain it a lot. Yeah, we maintain it because it looks it's still in its perfect condition. Yeah. It looks as though it was just made a few months ago. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at this architecture. So you can walk around and take some pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. The carpet is fluffy. Eh? The carpet is fluffy. It's nicely fluffy. Wow, look at that. The architecture is just put on. Wow. Look at that one at the center. It looks like there are a couple of Axe, and then this one is the biggest one. It feels like I'm in Turkey actually. Now this is the full view of Kampala. We, we just, there, there is the parliament, the parliament, is, the Kabaka parliament is over there. Wow. Look at this. Kampala, Kampala.
Ah, look at that theater, amphitheater there. There's an amphitheater there. Yesterday we were somewhere close to there, to those two skyscrapers. We've come so far, huh? halfway. That is halfway and we are going to the top. This minaret is the tallest. Our guide says it could be the tallest in Africa. And uh, the mosque is the third. It's, let me see. Yes, it's the third biggest in Africa. It has a capacity of 20 to 25,000 people. And it is used just like any other mosque. Ah, ah, I'm very close to getting there. Ah. These steps are 272. So once you're done with this, you go up and then you come down once or twice. You will have done enough exercise for the day. And since we are ever in the car, this is good exercise. When you look down there, yeah. I think the dark place with very many old settlements. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, so when you look above those, are uh, there those white buildings that the tall uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, So that hill is called Mulago Hill. Uh, that's where Mulago Hospital is found, okay. the, the Uganda National Referral Hospital okay. of Uganda. Uh -huh. And this forest over here, uh -huh. uh, that hill is called the Makerere Hill. Over there, that hill is called Namirembe Hill. Uh, that's a, ch a cathedral uh, for oh. the Anglicans. Uh -huh. yeah. That building, Duta was? Yes. Uh, uh, so that place is called the Lubaga Hill. Lubanga? Uh, yeah, Lubanga Hill. Uh, that's a cathedral for the Catholics. Okay. Yeah. Catholics, so they are very old, they are around 150 years old. Now you can feel the wind. We are right at the top of the minaret. We made it to the top, 272 steps. Adia here has struggled. I have suffered, but I've gotten here finally. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Today has been a fruitful day. We've gone to so many places, but so far, Kampala, your historical site, has been picturesque. We are trying to find somewhere where you can get traditional Ugandan food like the one we found in Jinja. If we won't find, we'll find something else to eat, but it's the end of the day, guys. Comment below on places you think I should have gone. If you like my adventures, kindly hit that like button. Such encouragement gives me the fuel to go around recording this journey of mine. I would travel anyways, but recording my, my entire journey and my group, it has been a dream come true, at least. Several years from now, my kids will be able to see this, even my grandchildren, if YouTube will still be alive. It's been a pleasure showing you things to do in Uganda. So, see you guys in the next video and stay tuned.